Hello and welcome to session number 75 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hello. 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 Hello, there. hello, hello. hello. Today, um, we're not going to have Matt. Um, and Austin will be here soon. He's, he's, he's running, he's driving, he's uh, <laughs> not obeying speed limits. Vroom. Uh, but besides all that, we are right ready to begin. Oop, here is our table. Uh, normally, so since last recap was, was Sid's, so normally we go in this order, so next would be Dennis, but since Dennis wasn't here, because Dennis has been away and he has finally returned to us. Um, I am back. I will recap last session. Oh, actually, you know what? How long have you been gone? Uh, 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 we need to recap more than one session for you. Uh-huh. Uh, um, I didn't think about this. I think, like, three sessions since one didn't happen. I, the were last you notes, there? Yeah? The last notes I have, or the last thing I remember, is that we had to stop early because Pontifex was talking to his parents. <laughs> <laughs> Did, so you were there for the like fight uh, um, against the spell effect uh, that was outside the mm -hmm. cabin. Okay. Yeah. That was the last time you were there. Uh, and mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, indeed, there was a conversation for Pontifex. Um, the session after that, there was a lot of talking. The um, there was a nowhere door near the cabin that has been opened for you, so you guys can return there whenever. Uh, and then you all feather fall. You know what? Hold on. Oop. There we go. You all feather fall back all the way down the mountain uh, and landed there safely. Uh, <laughs> indeed, we 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 swapped at Dennis for for a jury. Uh, oh, I need to do something on my. Twitch stream real quick. Um, would uh, Jory and Sid kindly like um, just recall the, the very beginning of the exploration of the cave? Sure thing. Uh, you got it? Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, once the party is reunited at the bottom after all the fireballs happened, we went into the cave and there was a bunch of frozen stone and ice within the cave. Uh, and there was a really like powerful gust of wind, probably sent by a crystal that like put almost all of us to a cold sleep, uh, except for the elves. Um, but we managed to get through that after the crystal was broken. And then we had these two voices that, that were wonderful, uh, that sent <laughs> us through some lovely uh, games and <laughs> such. Uh, we had some riddles. That was a great time, and Pip solved those. Uh, and then, uh, well, Squeak maybe got turned into a doll. I'm still a little unsure, but we have a felt Squeak with us anyway, with button eyes. Um, and then, after the riddles, I think we arrived at this ghostly playground. Like, there were a bunch of kids. Uh, spectral kids playing around, and Pip almost got entranced into joining their, their games, um, but eventually got out of it. And then, uh, after that, I think that's when the battle occurred, as uh, some acid started dripping from the ceiling, uh, as these snail-like creatures called Dead Shell. Uh, Made of fabric, but with a wooden shell, but dripping acid. It's a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I fixed my stream. Sorry, sorry about that. Thank you for taking over, Sid. No um, indeed, there was a there was a fight. The departed attempted to rest and were interrupted by these uh, sl snail things and these little dark purple cockroaches that. They were all like toys and dolls, um, and after successfully getting rid of them, uh, Pip realized that one of his very precious stones, one of his rocks, was missing. Um, 
And that was that was the end of that session. Then there's uh, the beginning of the last session from last week when uh, uh, the party finished resting, but they did not gain the benefits of a long rest, only of a short rest. They they failed to successfully sleep away the night. Um, Pip took charge and uh, led the party further down the cave all the way to a dead end. Um, <laughs> after figuring out that it was probably something beyond this sudden wall of ice in their way, um, Pontifex used his dubstep orb to uh, make a <laughs> hole through the sides of the cave through thunder um, dubstep uh, <laughs> damage and uh, uh, successfully essentially digged their way around. Uh, and past uh, the wall. Um, upon Tekka hearing the faraway sounds of what sounded like thunder and wind, like a faraway storm, but underground in the cave system, um, the party just straight up pushed through it and it got thrown around a little bit, but it made it across, uh, only for Pontifex to realize that his precious astrolabe was missing. Uh, so the party went back through the underground storm located the uh, the orb and went back through for the third time um <laughs> and uh because pontifex did uh, matt rolled the highest possible number that he could have on his investigation check it was something ridiculous like a 37 um what? he found something else in addition to his missing uh, astrolabe which was Pip's missing rock, and he noticed it in Tekka's pocket. So, um, what? <laughs> when Tekka heard some like singing up ahead, uh, the party sent Virion to investigate uh, whatever was uh, further ahead from them. And during while waiting for her, Pontifex confronted Tekka uh, about uh, the rock, and Tekka swore that he had no idea how that rock ended up in his pocket. Uh, so Pontifex returned the rock to Pip by saying that he was he, f he found it through magic. He didn't say that Tekka had it. Um, after that, the par the party pushed uh, forward. Viren returned and said that uh, it, it was safe up ahead, and there was like this singing further up ahead in, in the cave that came from the walls. And so they they went and they found that there was indeed, indeed this section of the cave that was kind of round, um, and there was. Uh, natural ore in the walls and the walls themselves were singing and that's when they remembered one of the metals that Orm Tinart asked the party to retrieve uh, called Frarium has uh, a property where it sings, it sounds like it sings, it makes its own noise, noise. Uh, so <sighs> through dubstep breathing uh, Pontifex <laughs> allowed Pip to, to breathe thunderous dubstep at the wall and uh, break it apart and retrieve some of this precious metal. Uh, so you're currently in possession of some raw frarium. Uh, it interrupted the singing, but then the metal resumed, so it seems to be undamaged. Um, moving on to the next section of the cave, Pontifex noticed a trap. Uh, a Just a classic, like, tripwire on the ground. Um, the party tried to decide whether to step over it or, or go around or find some other way to deal with it. Uh, and a whole argument and followed, which I put in a quotes channel. It's, it was like a whole thing uh, from the, the, the moral ethics, e ethics of summoning animals from Pip's animal hat. Um, and whether they had families, and whether it, it was right to use these animals to trip, to trigger the traps so that the party would be safe. Um, and ultimately, following this uh, huge argument, the trap was accidentally triggered, and it ended up being just a bucket full of marbles up on the ceiling that was uh, flipped over and fell and covered the party in marbles that then <laughs> spread everywhere. Um, so... The party stopped for a bit and uh, uh, proceeded to, to comfort Pip, who was heartbroken after this entire thing. Um, 
And uh, that, that part, it was a heartwarming moment where uh, the party got together and apologized to one another and uh, um, tried to get a feel for what's going on in the cave and what to do next. And during that rest, they realized that a lot of their stuff was missing. Um, multiple items from multiple people were gone, but they weren't too far. They were simply in the belongings of other people, like uh, uh, Virion's gun ending up uh, in Arian's uh, backpack, or Arian's wand ending up in, uh, um, I think, Pip's belongings. Uh, so everybody went through their things and sorted out the, the mishaps, and it, it became clear that some things or someone, some kind of force, uh, was messing with everyone's equipment. So, in case it was something invisible, Pontifex proceeded to summon his Tresim back, who can see invisible things. But the Tresim didn't seem to spot any uh, additional presence in the group, and so you continued your search. Further into the cave, you arrived at the lair of the hag known to live down here. Uh, and it seemed empty. So the party poked around, trying to see if there was any trace of life. Um, and since nobody seemed to be here, Pip eventually cast scrying on the on the witch uh, by using one of the dolls in this area as like um, a scrying focus. Uh, and he successfully noticed that the, the witch was also scrying on the party at that particular moment, and she was in an environment very similar to the one you guys were in, but not the same. Uh, and it clicked for Pip that everything you, you guys were seeing, that the entire lair, wasn't actually real, it was just an illusion. Um, so, by seeing through the illusion, you all were able to dispel it and just move on. Um, you came across a cave that was uh, that was filled with uh, uh, bugs, kind of like fireflies. They're called ember glow wisps. And the pip proceeded to collect a bunch in a bottle. Uh, the tressim went crazy. Sunny had a good time chasing them down. Uh, and after some fun, um, eventually you reach re you reach to this area of the cave that is just um, a bottomless abyss. And uh, there is a, a bridge made of ice that spans this gap. Um, that didn't look particularly sturdy. And you spotted uh, some movement, a creature clinging to the underside of the bridge itself and slowly beginning to reach around and climb onto it to face you. Uh, and this is where we'll pick back up. Okay. okay, I just got back. Can you repeat all that? <laughs> <laughs> you were here, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> you were part of the mischief. There was no mischief. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you all Mainly he a... was part mm -hmm. of the misery. <laughs> you all had like a moral debate over stepping over a tripwire. Well, <laughs> uh, you... <laughs> Moral You're oversimplifying debate. it. <laughs> so you see moral debate like it was very serious, but also we had to stop there because we couldn't breathe because we're all laughing too hard. <laughs> yes, we had to take a break because of laughter. My face we got was too hurting. silly. Um, one small note before we uh, open up with, co with combat is that uh, the map I had was uh, not fully... Didn't, didn't quite represent your situation. Um, so I, 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 I'll I show you, I'll have a bridge uh, that uh, spans uh, uh, a thing. But because it's it was wider than I wanted it to be, it's supposed to be kind of uh, uh, not particularly wide. I, I had increased the grid size by twice as much. So whenever you bring your carters onto the map, uh, if you could kindly like t increase their size... Uh, so that they actually fill up their square, that would be lovely. Uh, and just put them, like, up here. In this section. Um, I'll grab Pontifex. Turn up Gigapip. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, my controlling Pontifex again? Yes, please, and I'll take Aaron. Uh, oh, boy, I, I really about... hope he prepared Featherfall. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron. Oh, it's small. E okay, maybe, just about. Cool. So, the creature that you see beginning to climb um, about this part of the bridge, um, climbing up onto it, you see a hand that looks uh, um, somewhat humanoid, uh, with really and naturally long fingers that end in um, these very pointy claws. Um, this is 75, yes. Thank um, you. really long arms, really long legs, uh, and a face that is very, very, very unnaturally white. Uh, in fact, it's, uh, it's painted white. Um, not just paint, but actual makeup. Uh, you see that its clothes are very colorful, its hair is curly, and it goes in every direction. It's this really vivid and unusual orange. Uh, and you hear Sunny screaming at the top of her <laughs> lungs as this nightmarish clown blocks your way. And on no, that... you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. Let me move you guys for a moment, because I forgot my, my token is in here. Uh, uh, uh. Let me... Oop. Okay. Oh, this no. guy needs to be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, boop. Okay, here we go. Let me bring you guys back. Hey, Winter, I have a question. <laughs> yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> Ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> also, I blame Pip. I also went up. <laughs> you know what? That seems about right. Off to a great start. He's a <laughs> very tall brook, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tall boy. <laughs> I feel like the, the scale wasn't quite maintained here. <laughs> He's like twice the height of Arn. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> why? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this? Ugh. Let me bring it here. Why did I change this at the last moment? Ah, it's not prepared. Has Sunny slept since leveling up? Probably not. Uh, the level up happened uh, before you guys entered the cave, so yes, but she uh, she also couldn't finish her long rest uh, along so everybody no? else in the cave. So, uh, whatever hit points currently are, it's correct. Because okay. I, I, I controlled her and Brooke during the fight against the slugs. Ooh, okay. That's because it says out of 85. Yeah, she got hurt a little bit. Oh, right, I need to do Aaron. Yep. Whoops. I just dropped my dice bag. Uh-oh. Game canceled. <laughs> and if the DM drops uh, their dice, so the campaign is over. If the DM drops their dice, we're, leave we're allowed to leave early. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh! Yeah! 
A burst! That never happens. Uh -oh. It's probably okay. fine. Everyone set up and ready? Yep. Okay, then let's begin combat. Oh, damn, we rolled well. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect to be first. Okay, 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 okay. Um, this ridiculously tall, very skinny, a clawed clown. Um, yes, enjoy, enjoy the minis. Very, very high, very detailed. Um, he's going to, I guess, get a pie? Um, <laughs> we're, we're going with a pie. Of course. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what Pip did uh, when he was haunting Sunny. Uh, the, 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 he was definitely a pie-holding clown. Um, we're going to uh, chuck... How many do I have? I have two pies. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 We're going to buy Pontifex. Um, why is Pontifex in front? Why am I in front? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that doesn't feel right. I, I, no, no, but mm, who was in front last time? I don't recall. Uh, that's okay. Uh, let's buy Pontifex once. Um, which is uh, a 16 to hit him? No. No? No. Okay. Fine. Uh, we can most certainly buy someone else. Um, the clown is going to just run up ahead and instead aim the second pie straight at Sunny. Um, <laughs> targeted. targeted. Because because Sunny is uh, um and, and Sunny is currently frightened. Uh, the the pie will be at advantage, which means a twenty two to hit her. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, this is 22 points of necrotic damage. Whoa. <laughs> Pie damage. <laughs> oh. Pie's gone bad. First is custard <laughs> damage, then blueberry damage. Now we have pie damage. <laughs> what flavor of damage is this? Ne necrotic. That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> um. So this is naturally uh, a very bizarre occurrence. You just see this clown who is apparently hanging from the bottom of the bridge. Um, come and start tossing pies in your direction. One lands um, just past Pontifex. It, it nearly got Virion. And the second one, it hits Sunny straight in the face. Uh, the, the cream explodes in every direction. It splatters on some of you uh, around her. Um, and uh, it would be almost comical uh, under any other circumstances. But you see that uh, um, Sunny's face is bloodied from the force of the blow. Uh, her hair is a mess and she has streaks of tears already uh, just going down her face. Um, the, the clown laughs and then uh, points a finger towards Tekka. Uh, and I need Tekka to roll a wisdom saving throw. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Nothing could possibly go bad. Sid. Uh huh? <laughs> tell me something. Describe to me something that Tekka is afraid of. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I think it's a massive crab. <laughs> I, need, I need to know the story. <laughs> um, sure. Since a young child, uh, Tekka was, was always taught to be afraid of the sea. 
and he saw a crab walk out of the sea and it pinched uh, and like pinched his toe and it was a bad bad day and ever since it was a nightmare fear in fact most fears um aren't really rational uh you can be afraid of things that can, that can actually hurt you, but for example, a lot of people who are scared of spiders are not scared of the spiders that can actually bite you and hurt you. It's just an all-encompassing fear of all spiders. Uh, and similarly, a lot of fears that are developed during childhood don't necessarily um, have to be fears of things that can um, hurt you or that can hurt you to any significant degree. Uh, and Tekka, you have one such fear, one memory from when you were just a, li just a little boy. Um, and uh, the experience of being uh, uh, hurt by just a crab was one of the worst things that had ever happened to you in your entire life up until that point. Uh, and you had nightmares about it for, for weeks uh, after that. Um, so as... Uh, the clown points uh, a very long finger towards Tekka. You see Tekka recoil, not as if hurt, but just in fear. Um, and the clown begins to shift its shape uh, before everyone's eyes. It no longer looks like a clown. It no longer looks like a person at all. Uh, this creature is now an enormous crab. A Lidarian crab. Which looks just no. like a standard crab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it is this big. Okay. That brings us to Aaron's turn, which is still me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Orion looks at this clown turning into a crab, uh, and uh, he he instinctively backs away and ends up bumping into into Brook. Uh, he shakes his head and says, "Oh, oh no! Um, I need his stat block. Here it is." Um, his perception is the best one in the party. After potentially Vivian's passive perception, or yeah, passive. I, I, I think yours is like a nineteen. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll just go with this because he's first. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, he has eighteen. Wow. Um. So he points not at the crab slash clown, but at its. Feet? Do crabs have feet? I have no idea. Um, but directly beneath, uh, where you can see that uh, there are some cracks that are beginning to form in the eyes up ahead, uh, under the uh, clearly massive weight of this creature. Uh, and he says, we all need to be careful. If the if the bridge breaks, uh, we'll, we'll be stuck here. So um, no dubstep. <laughs> definitely no that word. <laughs> um, and since he bumped into Brook, uh, he's just going to go ahead and put a hand on his forearm um, and say, it's better if fewer people go up ahead, so it's up to you. Uh, and you'll just cast haste on Brook. Ooh. And pull so back. Can get there. That brings us to Sunny, who is frightened. Um, while frightened by the creature, even though it no longer looks like uh, a clown for the rest of you, it still does to her. Uh, so in this state, uh, we begin by open uh, by um, rolling a wisdom saving throw. For her? Mm-hmm. Pretty please. <coughs> Um, okay. <laughs> uh, 
she has advantage because she next to an ally. Okay, 16 is still not enough though. Uh, so mm -hmm. she will not move, she will not act, she is just cowering in fear. God damn it, get yourself together. <laughs> uh, she, she is bawling her eyes out. Uh, this is a brand new nightmare from her from yesterday? Two days ago. Yeah, two in game uh, days ago. <laughs> so, brand new trauma for her. She's not ready to face it. Uh, Brooke, it's I your turn. Here, so I don't get it. <laughs> it's just uh, a we, that's right <laughs> oh yeah uh, you don't know so Pepe learned how to enter people's dreams oh god and uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, so he immediately used that ability to like communicate with people and also to torture Sunny by showing up in her dreams as a clown <laughs> Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and consequences of actions. For actions of consequences. Look what you've done, Pip. I know everything's always my fault. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That is one. One X for dash with a. Uh, uh, haste. Your base speed is I'd... doubled. Yeah, you don't even have to dash. Oh, nice. That helpful. Cool. Then I um, yeah. Uh, it's smart to push it down. Sure, let's try. I would like to push it down. You do that to something that is this big. I think the size restrictions is for grappling. I don't think it's for shoving, but don't. I'm not 100 percent sure. Is this from a feature of yours so uh, you can shove it prone, or is it? Are you just? Uh, no, I like, just want to get it off the bridge. It's one size larger, larger than you. Uh then yeah, it is. Uh, it's too big. It's too big. God damn it. Let's make it shorter. All right, I'll hit it. Do I? I don't have advantage on my hits, right? Ooh, Why actually, first, first thing, bonus action, attacking myself for the Crimson Ride. Mm hmm. Ouch. Okay. And you then... take up in the palm of your hand. Uh, Sunny is in trouble, so you step ahead. You draw your own blood. Your blade glows. Uh, this is the dawn, right of the dawn? Yeah. Okay. Your blade uh, just lights up this entire section of the cave, but you still can't see the bottom uh, beneath the partially transparent bridge. Uh, you raise your glowing sword and uh, you start uh, uh, preparing a potential uh, seafood dish. 19 hits. Nice. All right. Mm. Oh, it would have been plus nine. <laughs> 21 <laughs> hits. <laughs> That's three radiant. And 11 slicing. Mm -hmm. The Second size oh. of this crab um, makes it feel like ooh, this will take a while. Your sword actually struggles to cut through it and you leave this uh, small gash into its uh, tough exterior. Um, but you pull back and you go in for a second slash. 21 hits. Okay. Six radiant. Got it. Thank you. Okay. You land two uh, precise hits. You still have your hasted action. Oh, yeah. I get a hit again. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 
16 hits. Okay. It's not too too difficult to aim your weapon uh, against a target that is this big. Uh, but despite three consecutive successful blows, um, it feels like there is so much more to go. God. Is that the end of your I don't turn? Get a, I don't get a second attack with my haste of action, uh, right? Correct, you just get one. Okay, that's my turn. All right, moving on to Pontifex, which is uh, controlled by Austin. Who is currently muted. Uh, Pontifex is going to take a few steps back and then glance over to Pip and he's going to nod and then Pip will nod back. <laughs> Pontifex oh, okay. is holding a spell. Ah, the trigger being? When Pip casts a spell. Hey. Uh, Viren, you see Pontifex back away and do nothing. Uh, what do you do? What uh, do you do? So I think, um, looking at this big thing, she looks down at, like, the, the cracks on the ice and watches Brooke run up and just kind of instinctively also takes a step back. It's just, um, are, are you... I, I think you have this under control. Um... And then just kind of assesses. She takes it, like, kind of looks at her gun again, looks at the cracks on the ice again. And she grabs at her that necklace under her scarf again, and that silver light again will cast Sacred Flame on the clown. I think it's a deck save, save for me. Yeah. Yep. Deck save. DC sixteen. Dexterity. Yep. Uh, Eleven. Oh. Uh. Oops. Ten radiant. So much radiant damage. Yeah. Okay. Um, you light up this uh, um, incarnation of currently Tekka Spheres. It's a very glowy crab. <laughs> Ra crab rave. Crab rave. And uh, I think uh, is there any, no. any additional effect? I don't remember. N uh, no, it's just that it doesn't get any uh, benefit from cover. Got it. So. Rook is not in the way. No. Yeah, that is going to be my turn then. Okay. Back off. Um, we begin your turn with a wisdom saving throw. Um, yeah, that might not be necessary. Um, mm -hmm. Because throughout his life, Tech has been put in a lot of situations where he's been stunned by fear and where he wouldn't let himself be stunned by fear. Um, so where a lot of people would probably have to go through months of uh, therapy to process <laughs> trauma, he chooses to meditate. And he meditates and tries to remember that memory from so long ago in his early childhood. And I think it's up to the viewer how this is interpreted. But he reshapes the memory to either what it actually was or just how he thinks it might have been. And that is that when Tekka discovered that crab as a young boy, he was trying to approach it and stubbed his toe. He didn't actually get pinched by the crab. And when he was, when he, uh, when he kicked this rock, the crab like scurried away and hid in a bunch of seaweed. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe that is reflected in this clown now. Maybe this crab has a bunch of seaweed on it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, Tekka is using his feature called... Stillness um, of Mind. Exactly. Normally, so. the way this would work would, would be that at the start of your turn, you do a wisdom saving throw, and upon a failure, you skip your turn. And Stillness of Mind takes an action. But Got I'm still going to give it to you. Uh, you have a feature okay. that specifically cancels out uh, uh, being frightened, uh, and uh, you narrated it really nicely. So okay. you can have it. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. You would still take up your action for yeah, for this turn, cool. but uh, yeah. yeah, you can go ahead and do that. And as for what it looks like, um, everyone actually witnesses this mental image you're you're conjuring. Uh, the crab, for a moment, looks like a rock, and it, and it looks smaller 
than the form of the crab currently is and uh, the entire action plays out for a moment everybody catches a glimpse almost like of a ghostly foot that accidentally kicks the rock and it nearly goes tumbling down the the bridge but then the the, ro the rock clings onto the uh, the ice and pulls itself back onto it uh, and cracks are expanding a little bit further and reaching further and further um, and the crab looks like the clown again just still maintaining its really the increased size uh, you you haven't seen a, a person in quotation marks that is just towering like this over Brook um, and the clown appears displeased with you Tekka just gives you this frustrated look and then brings its attention back to uh, the fighter ahead of him. Okay, yeah, and then Tekka is going to use Step of the Wind to sort of like delicate, delicately dash alongside the ice here. Try to not un uh, destabilize the ice more than it already has. Uh, and then he is going to use his bonus action to do unarmed strikes. Um, but honestly, the unarmed strikes is just a tool to do flurry of blows. So we're going to do that. Uh, Step of the wind uses your bonus action to dash. Oh, it does. Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. But I mean, yeah, I can still run. So. Yes. It doesn't make them more normal. But yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. Um, yeah, Flurry of Blows. Let's see here. Flurry of Blows needs you to make an attack first. Oh. oh Jory, <laughs> such a Sorry. fun skill. I've been, I've been looking at Monk lately. Sorry. Got it. No, that's good. I, I read it wrong. So, uh, so, yeah, that doesn't work. Okay. Well, hmm. What to do in this situation? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> help me push. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Take a cat, help push. That was the whole plan, and I can't oh. anymore. So. <laughs> I assumed that we could do it together. Yeah, that was the plan, but no can do. <laughs> it turns out. Um, but let's see. How far can Take a run? Just to make sure. Uh, it is 45. So he can get there. Um, yeah, and I guess there is no other thing I could do here. Um, just to make sure, but I don't think so, sadly. So he's just going to stand around and not do a whole lot. <laughs> I mean, he, he shook off this fear that had taken hold of him rather suddenly and violently. Um... And despite, like, Sunny being so much taller and bigger than him, uh, he steps right up to this monstrosity while she can't even take a single step in, in any direction. Um, Tekka's mind just allowing him to, to shake off this old memory and go face the nightmare head-on. That's uh, the entirety of your turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pip, you see Tekka also stepping up ahead. He looks so light, he's barely affecting the cracked ice under his feet. Um, you have just exchanged a look with Pontifex, he exchanged a nod, the two of you. Uh, what do you do? All right, Professor, <laughs> just as we practiced, double decker mind melt! And Pip is going to cast Mind Sliver on Feeds on Nightmares. It's an intelligent save. Bring back the thing. Intelligence? Yes. 26. What? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart cookie. Alright, it, it succeeds that. Uh, at the same time, Professor is casting Psychic Lance on it, which, which is also an intelligence save. <laughs> Oh uh, no. Which will likely not work. 24. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and then they, they share a look again. <laughs> and then <laughs> I imagine Potifex would say something like, we never do this again. 
<laughs> is there no effect on a success for either spell? Well, there's certainly not one for uh, Mind Sliver. I think Psychic Lance does do half damage. Okay. Psychic damage. Is it immune? <laughs> no. That was a really long pause. So I have to check! <laughs> scared me. <laughs> um, so it, it would take nine psychic damage. Okay. Oof. All right. For Pip's bonus action, he hears that they're trying to push this thing, and Pip's going to try and help mentally with a telekinetic shove. Uh, needs to make a strength save. Twenty-three. Oh. oh, guys, what is this thing? <laughs> wow, we've been over this. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it succeeds. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hmm. All right. It uh, feeds on Nightmare's turn. Um. Ooh. Okay, uh, for my sanity, I'm going to move everybody a few feet forward, just so that I have more space to work with. Uh, like, I'm gonna center you on the bridge. Uh, no, like, it's not gonna make any consequence or anything, it just it just makes it easier for me, because there is space behind you guys. Uh, oh, oop. oh, not Pip, it's now out I'm of I'm dying! <laughs> uh, okay, good enough. This is safe to stand on. Boom. Um. Right? Hold on, let me roll. Let me roll. Four, five. Okay. We got it. Um. First. Feeds on Nightmares is going to strike back at the person who has uh, been hitting it. Uh, so the clown, instead of producing another pie, is just going to attempt to lacerate you open with its claws. Uh, Brooke, uh, it is a nine, it's a 19 to hit. Oh, not with haste, right? It's plus two armor class? Yeah, plus two. Oy, it misses. It misses. Okay. This enormous hand, almost as big as you are, it comes crashing down on you. You have to feel... You, there is no block in this with your shield. You just step back, uh, just in time for the hand to slam onto the bridge and uh, uh, produce a few more cracks. Uh, and for a moment, your your heart sinks, but the, the bridge holds. Um, then the, the clown, um, seeing that everybody's getting into position to just shove it off the bridge, uh, it... Holds up the hand that he just tried to hit you with and snaps his fingers, and you can hear the sound. Uh, uh, you can hear the sound that just reverberates across the entire cave, uh, and the clown disappears. And I need Brook and not Tekka to roll a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Oh God. Hmm. Let's. See. 21. It's 21 off. fails. What? Dennis, would you like to describe to me? Perfect. Uh, something a <laughs> brook is afraid of. Um. It's probably not more one thing. Does it have to be one thing? Uh, it, would it doesn't probably... have. It doesn't have to be like the scariest thing. Just pick one. Okay. I would say it's it's probably <clears throat> it would probably be something along the lines of either a very wounded person or like people fighting. If that's possible, if you just need like one person thing that it can transform to. 
would be more of a wounded person. Mm -hmm. More of a slight battle wounds. I, I, I can work with that. Um, so, everybody would see no longer just one creature. It looks more like an amalgamation of multiple people. Kind of just mashed together, uh, limbs reaching in every direction, uh, hands that uh, uh, for a moment one manages to grab a virum by the cloak and you just pull away from it. Uh, and each of these people that are all together uh, like this, they're all wailing in fear and they're bleeding and leaving this trail of blood on the bridge. Um, most of them looking Brooke straight in the eyes. Um, as if blaming him for uh, the suffering that they're in. Uh, Brooke, you are frightened. Of course. Um, and uh, feeds on nightmares, so the, the many arms uh, they reach in every direction. Sunny is uh, just curled up in a ball. Um, you're, you're, you nearly got grabbed. This thing is like uncomfortably close to you. Some of these. Um, extensions of peoples, they, they go around you. You're almost enveloped by them. Um, one such arm reaches for Arin, who pulls back and says, No, 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 no. Um, and where you were seeing multiple people, all of them hurt, all of them bleeding in pain. Um, for Brooke, that remains what he see what he sees, but everybody else sees the creature shift one more time. Um, in its appearance. Um, as Arin is getting... Uh, how do I flavor this damage? Um, the various hands uh, managed to grab hold of his cloak, where Virion had successfully escaped, uh, and he sort of like pulled in. Uh, into this mass of, of limbs and, and corpses. Um, and he eventually crawls back out, uh, looking uh, um, horribly battered. Um, uh, and he himself also bleeding. Uh, this is the damage that he took. Um... Does he have 10 pitch beam? I think we got yes, some from uh, Orm. That's right. Okay. Uh, so that's correct. Uh, the pile of bodies for a moment becomes just one. Just a body of uh, a woman. Uh, Anitarava. You can see the feathers uh, that uh, grow on its own one side of her head in place of hair. That uh, makes her obviously... Uh, a member of the uh, the bird tribe people. Um, she, her skin is pale in this bluish color, and she's dragging herself uh, across the the bridge, uh, reaching towards Arin, and then uh, failing to grasp him again. And then eventually, the vision of, of the woman returns to being uh, uh, multiple injured bodies. Uh, Arin is not going to be frightened. So there was two attacks and the bonus action. We move on to, to Arin himself. Who, under his breath... Um, oh, oh, I need to roll a um, concentration check on haste. His constitution is this much. Uh, he just took 31 damage, so he has to pass a um, pass for a match of 15, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, comfortably so. A 22. That was a very good roll. Okay. Arin is in melee, which is not his favorite place to be. But he does have a short sword. Ah, uh, so you'll pull it out, and he's just going to try to uh, chop off the, the 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 limbs that are still reaching for him. Um, 
it's going to be two attacks. They're both at plus eight, so that's an 18 to hit and a 25, and they're both hits. So this is that. Uh, the two attacks, 12, uh, 21 damage total from both. Oh, nice number. Ah, uh, little help here. Moving on to Sunny. Who, uh, Dennis, go ahead and roll a wisdom saving throw. Does she have advantage also from reading herself? That's actually unclear. I'm gonna say yes. Uh, she's still next to an ally, so she gets uh, um, advantage against being frightened. 17 is the DC. Um no longer seeing this having the form of a giant terrifying clown as she um, slowly pulls herself up to her feet still visibly shaking uh, and hating every minute of this but she uh, finally draws a weapon uh, however her oh wait no yeah she's free she can she can act uh, Dennis go ahead and take your turn with uh, with Sunny. Also, if you're talking, I'm not hearing you. Oh. Uh, let's get to a more safe position, which would be here. And attack. Sixteen hits. Eighteen damage. Oh, nope, that should be twelve, not eighteen. And then second attack. Wait, why uh why are you saying twelve? It should be twelve instead of eighteen damage. Why? Because it's plus five. Oh I see. Oh yeah yeah, the, the plus eleven is to hit. Yes, makes sense. Yeah. Um, and that's a 23 to hit, so that's a successful blow. Um, and get another 13. 13. I assume she still has her bonus action. Does she still uh, she have does. her second wind? Yes. Okay. She is using the second wind. Ooh. Okay. Right. Okay, this is really odd, but let's just... Let's get rid of this thing, quickly! Alright. Uh, to Brook, this is a devastating sight. The people that he and Sonya are supposed to help, she is cutting them down. Uh, that's how he perceives it. Speaking of Brook, he's scared. <sighs> I'll take I a wisdom saving throw from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Five is not a success, so he unfortunately skips his turn. Okay. That brings us to Pontifex. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, uh, he's going to be like, he's going to hear Sunny say, let's just get rid of this thing quickly and be like, yeah, good idea. He's going to try banishment. <laughs> oh. What? He has banishment? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Let me save. read. Uh, uh, so first, what the uh, um, what spell? What slot is he casting it with? It's fourth. Okay. Um, and let me read the text real quick. You attempt to send one creature that you c that you can see within range to another plane of existence. Um. Okay. Okay. 
This works? Well, this works. I I'll roll for it. Uh, charisma saving throw. It's a 19. Uh, it's a six. Oh, this is fine. This is fine. Six. Six. I'm chewing on my finger in stress. <laughs> mm. Austin. Uh, oh, yeah. no, that doesn't apply. Mm. Never mind. I was thinking uh, um, about one of his features, but it doesn't work. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh, yeah. Lord. No rerolls? Nobody can do anything? Oh. <laughs> I can't reroll someone else's roll. <laughs> yeah, these are some excellent saves I have to work with. I feel bad, but only a little bit. <laughs> but but Vex just looks at Virian, shakes his head, <laughs> walks away. <laughs> Thanks, um, buddy. <laughs> V Viren essentially saw saw him hold up his staff, point it at the um, <laughs> pile of bodies, and nothing happening. And then he walks away. <laughs> <laughs> Refuses to elaborate. <laughs> Refuses to elaborate. <laughs> and which means that we're moving on to, to Virion. <sighs> like, hey Matt, if you're watching, I'm wasting all your spell slots. <laughs> <laughs> So like, while well, she's like, you know, in this pile of bodies, you know, not a great place to be. Um, how is the ice below situation? Is it cracking still? Very much. Okay. Oh. Um. You can hear it. So I think she'll she'll look down, look at the ice, and just look at everyone else and be like. How do we feel about sending it down? While we're um, on it? You have to run. Yeah? Do it. Okay, so what Virian will do is move to this side of it and she's going to hold her action until everybody else has moved okay then we're moving on to Taka uh, you have instructions to move away okay uh, you can see that uh, Brooke, however, is much like Sunny was, curled up in a ball and uh, mm -hmm. uh, very obviously not uh, moving at all. Hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> thing, seeing that, yeah, Tekka will definitely run up to uh, Brooke and sort of just like pull him up to his feet and push him. Uh, towards... Off the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you do not decide this, I am doing this for mm. you. Just go. <laughs> this works like a grapple. Uh, it can be resistant yeah. because, because Brooke can't do anything right now. Uh, and dragging him away means that every fighter movement take 10 for you. Yeah. So you can essentially move up to half your speed. Where are you taking him? Uh, taking him in this direction, I believe. How far? Uh, as far as Tekken will be able to go, I think. Uh, you have to tell me, because you also have other methods of movement. Like, are you are you doing bonus action to, to move further? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, so it's dashing, so if it's doubled and then halved, then it's that would be 45 feet of movement then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and yet, so this way? We roll a, um, yeah, that direction. Yep. Okay. Wow. <laughs> um, it's easier than it would normally be because it is ice. So there isn't that much uh, uh, 
like Bro Brook is sliding across this surface. Uh, he would be really heavy to carry anywhere otherwise, but you can just grab him by by an arm, like uh, under his shoulder, and you just start pulling him. Uh, your own feet are struggling to to find the traction on the ice, um, but uh, he, uh, you. You put, this is like pure adrenaline coursing through you. You put all of your efforts uh, into finding just the right spot where the ice is a little rough, where you can uh, uh, put your feet there and just start going. And then once you build up some momentum, you, the both of you just kind of slide for a few uh, dozen feet until you end up over here. Lovely, yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that's your entire turn. That it is. So, Pip. All right, Virian. I hope you know what you're doing. Me too. Is going to polymorph into a giant nighthawk. Nice. <laughs> For a moment, you see Pip growing bigger and bigger, and Virian, you look down at, at the at the bridge that uh, uh, is cracking under the uh, the mound of bodies. Uh, but despite uh, Pip's size growing to a great size, uh, 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 yeah, despite it getting really big, um, he doesn't get any heavier. Uh, and he flaps his wings. Uh, where are you going? This way or that way? Uh, what's How much speed do I have? Have I never given you the side block for an eye talk? Nope. Oh. I asked well, I, for it. Yeah, I am a terrible DM. That's okay. No, it's fine. You're a great thing, yeah. Let me look real quick. H Tent. M. This is a bird. That's an elephant. I know what a bird looks I flap my 80. ears. 80? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Give my elephant life. Please. What? Can you give my elephant life? The gift of life? <laughs> okay, Can well, you, you repeated yourself. I was hoping plastic. for you to elaborate, but... <laughs> I'll just... You should know what I mean. <laughs> Here's my, my spare rib. Okay, I don't see anything. Uh, I clicked player controlled. You don't see this? No. But it's player controlled. Okay, don't move it. Hold on. Oh, now I see it. Okay. Thank you. You know what a bird looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you know I have models. <laughs> Hip is coming over here. Uses 50 feet of movement. Gonna use 10 to drag Pontifex back. Then step over here. Use 10 to drag Sunny back. Ah. Oh. That's uh. Well, can I do that? I, I know it can be considered grappling. If I can only do one, that's fine. It is grappling. Okay. Then I'll just bring uh, Pontifex back a bit more. And that's it. Wait, hold on. Why can't, why can't you do it on Sunny? Because um... I only have one grapple action. And you've already grappled you? Used it on Pontifex. Okay, you want to prioritize back. Pontifex over Sunny? <laughs> don't don't <laughs> phrase it like that. <laughs> I'll get her later. I'm watching. Sunny moves sooner. <laughs> okay. And I'm sure um, Sunny won't mind if I have to run down and catch her. Or here for for the future. Uh, oh, thing. wow. Oh, I love it. Uh, and let me make it so that you can see it. 
and oh wait this is proper you can you can see it i can see it you can see the outline nice yeah okay give it life look at that elephant <laughs> God, that wingspan. Big burp. Yep. This is this is exactly what a nighthawk looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this uh, it's uh, back to me. <laughs> oh, and you'll have to set its initiative to to match pips. But besides that, <clears throat> um. Um, does this trigger Virion's reaction? Is she satisfied or is she waiting for also Arin and Sunny to be further away? Does it look like the structural integrity of the bridge under Arin and Sunny are... is... is bad? Or like the crack's not under them yet? Um... <clears throat> I think it's not. It, it's there are cracks, but the level of how bad it is, uh, um, there's there's a, a degree to it. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. as bad as it could be. Okay. So um, can can I yeah? addendum if you will allow it? If uh, the intention was for everyone to get as far away as possible first, however, if this thing is going to try to move, then. She you saw it earlier it that besides moving, it can also teleport. Okay. Um, the and I would say since it's like about to be its turn, you would say that one of the many, many, many hands um, is being held up and is about to snap its fingers. So you can you can okay. see it coming. Okay. In that case, then she would just try to nip it in the bud before it has a chance to get away. Uh, so in which case, it will trigger her hell action if that's cool. Go and for it. I'm curious she, to see what's about to happen. She draws her her rapier, and there is a loud crack, and she'll cast Booming Blade. Ha. Where's my attack roll? Dubstep Blade. Dubstep Blade. I'm gonna inspiration that. <laughs> Oh, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. So it's plus seven, so 16. 16? 16? 16, 16 oh, is its armor class. Nice. Misa beats it. Uh... Sorry, I have to look at my spell. Uh... It is big. It is difficult to miss. Also, I'll let you know, I have currently in my bag 69 inspiration dice. Nice. Nice. How is it possible? Nice. That's including the ones on your table. That's like more <laughs> dice than sessions, right? Seven. Some of one, them are for merit. Two, three. From what? From birthdays. Merit ah, and okay. Birthdays. Makes sense. Makes sense. Wait. And because there's allies, I get a sneak attack at two. Extra five. So that's. Uh, I can't do math. Eight, eight piercing. The second two d sixes are the more piercing sneak attack than two thunder. Okay. She's aiming for the bridge or for the bodies. The bodies. Okay. Okay. That's what I did. That's what the armor class is. Um. The thunder damage is two. Two. Okay, so but, yeah. yeah, and it also has there's like um, like sound waves, I guess, sort of clinging around its feet, that sort of reverberate too. Because if it moves five feet or more, it also takes more thunder damage. If the target willingly moves five feet or more before then, does teleport count? Teleporting isn't normally considered a movement. Probably not, but... 
<laughs> Kalanka rules. <laughs> okay. Oh, actually, uh, how far uh, is it? Uh, let me look. Okay. Um. Uh. Actually, um, also just because, why not? Let's go for broke. Um, activate the dust blade on that one too. So it needs to make a con save. It's probably gonna make it, but nineteen. Yeah, it makes it. Okay. So, um, l let me add up a couple of numbers real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. The bridge is still holding. Um, the cracks are expanding further and further. They are under Sunny and Arian's feet, and now they're under yours, Virion. Um, neither Sunny nor Arian are scared. Uh, so the pile of bodies is going to attempt to hit uh, to hit Virion uh, first. And mm -hmm. then the oh, what will happen after? Uh, so, depending, yeesh. Sorry, um, it is a twenty-nine to hit. No, yeah, it hits. <laughs> <laughs> if I just say no I'm hard like... enough, does it miss? <laughs> <laughs> just like I'm surprising myself on my own rolls. Um... Ooh. I forgot earlier that Arin is immune to necrotic damage, so I have to reduce his damage a little bit. Um I say this out loud so I don't forget. I have rolled for your damage, it's here in front of me. I don't have I should not touch these dice. Oh. Okay. I'll figure that in a moment. Um I need some uh, eleven removed. Right. 69. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Uh, so for... <laughs> <laughs> for Virion, it's going to be 9 points of necrotic damage. And... I am uh, resistant to that. 21 uh, slashing. Not resistant to that one. And then I need uh, a wisdom saving throw. Is this against uh, being uh, frightened? Uh, I'm being my scrolling bad wheel isn't yeah. working anymore. My, same. Ooh. Which is something where just, I'm. I'm sorry. Something just broke with uh, one of the scripts. Uh oh. Yeah, I can't. Oh no, we broke the uh. table! Ah! No. Oh, this is so bizarre. I can't, like. Whoa. Yeah, I can't yeah. do anything. <laughs> I can't even scroll up and down if my cursor's on the table. So yeah, it looks like there is something really. I can. Okay. It... It's, it's only, only uh, when my camera is facing a specific angle, so like think, towards you, the DM screen. So if you like or... mouse over the over like where the battle map is and try to scroll, it doesn't work. But if you go to the, like the outside of the table, it works again. Okay, let me, let me try to see. This is very spooky. I didn't mean for this. Oh to get yeah, this it spooky. is only at a certain angle. What? <laughs> when, it's when you're facing either uh, Dennis and Matt's side of the table when you're facing me. Oh, or away from me. It, if you face the towards uh, Jory me. and <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, I broke something. Something broke. Yeah. Like, cause I can't like move my token or anything. Someone's uh... hello. Hold on. Don't move. Don't move your thing. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. It was your mini, cause it's gone now. Okay. Uh, does it work? Wow. 
Uh, there we go. Maybe. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dear, dear, your mini script broke. Uh oh. It's <laughs> um, me, I'm the problem. It, it hit you so hard, your mini <laughs> broke. Hold on. Yeah. Um. So let me. I can. I can. Um. I know how to fix this. Okay. Possibly. One moment. <laughs> uh, so let's just have this as a backup. Oop. I'm going to kidnap you. And I, uh, I miss you. All the scripting. <laughs> your health is okay. You're currently at full, so it's easy to remember. Yeah. And then put you back. Let's see if that does anything. Okay, uh, I removed the scripts from your mini and put them back, so you have to set back your armor class. Um, okay. And health uh, one more time. Also, let me mix it, make this face the correct way. Uh, boop. Okay. Um, so, meanwhile, I'll add up the damage you just took. I hit you so hard that I <laughs> broke, broke the, the script. scripts. Uh... Don't touch the dice. So that's 13 points of necrotic damage and uh, 14, 17, 21 points of slashing. Is it 13 points of necrotic damage? Did I touch my necrotic dice? Yes, because you have, said I nine have a three earlier. and a zero. Oh, okay, yeah, I must have touched them. I said specifically not to touch them. But you did. I sure did. I do vaguely remember it was a five and a four. Yeah, I just remember that it exactly ate through my temp HP. Ah. Uh, I appreciate that you have a way better memory than I have. Uh, yes. Uh, than I have. I also my had one number to remember. Um, And then we have to resolve your wisdom saving throw. Yes. And the damage that I took. Uh, What's my armor class? 18. It was 21 slashing? Yes. Okay, wisdom saves. I'm good at these. Did I make it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, because your circumstances are a little different, uh, uh, I'm not going to ask you what your fear is. I will narrate it. Um, okay. Because there is a person that used to matter to you. Uh, somebody who used to be the most important person in your entire life, in the entire world. Uh, and much like... Uh, much like a, an empty space on an otherwise filled bookshelf, uh, there is this hole uh, within you where you know that something is supposed to be there, but uh, uh, it isn't anymore. And uh, the the hole itself, it's it prevents you from even missing whatever is supposed to be there. Um, there is, for a moment, for everybody to see, the pile of bleeding bodies is beginning to look like a single individual. But it's absolutely impossible to be able to see the details of this person. Um, you just see the vague shape of a person, and then it fades away, and all the other bodies return. Uh, Virion is immune to this effect. That was one attack. Um, 
nobody is frightened, which is uh, exactly what this thing doesn't want. So instead of attacking somebody who is under the effect of, um, of its fear, it's just going to pick at random. So it's one, two, three <coughs> along the... I should be still frightened. You're kind of... You're beyond... Okay. Actually, maybe not. What is it? 40 feet of teleport and then it can also move? And it's an excellent point you just made for me, Dennis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dennis. Listen, we gotta play fair. So, it teleports... If you don't protect Tani, I will. <laughs> <laughs> it teleports here. Um, so the mistaken. snapping of the fingers finally happens. Uh, after he Viren is hit, but she manages to just stand her ground. The eyes cracking further under her feet. Uh, but she stares down the the pile of bodies, uh, who then vanish before her eyes. Um, normally, I'd have everybody who is within uh, uh, five feet of the creature have to roll with some saving throws, but um, Arin and Viren are immune, and Sunny has already succeeded in freeing herself from the effect, so none of them can be influenced anymore. Um, that means that the creature is just gonna go after the person who is. Uh, the bodies drag themselves towards Brooke um, as if to uh, seek revenge against him, as if any of this is his fault. Uh, the attack against Brooke is at advantage, which makes it uh, 39 to hit. Uh, 29, not 39. Jesus. Wait, no. It okay. hits. Uh, hold on. I can do math. <laughs> There's so much going on right now. He's a 31 to hit. I can I can absolutely do math. Um, yeah. Which makes it... Uh, I could have also done a ranged attack, but uh, we're, we're not doing it. Yes, we're not doing it. Uh, so this is the slashing part. It's... Uh, no, no. Amazing. That's uh, 15 points of slashing damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, 19 necrotic. Mm -hmm. okay. Action, bonus action, it's done. Arn <clears throat> maintains, uh, is maintaining his concentration on haste. Um, he, once the pile of body disappears, he, he ends up basically making eye contact with Virion. Um, he <laughs> looks, uh, how do I put it? Ups upset. This entire thing kind of sucks. Um, let's see, there's a giant bird behind him. Well, he's, uh, at the range, which is what he prefers. Um, he says... <laughs> Whatever, I don't care about the bridge. Let's just kill it. Neil, uh, put away the sword. Get the get the bow out inside range, 150 feet, comfortably uh, within it. It's two attacks against it. Some miss. That's a hit. What do you miss with the bow? Uh, six plus six at so 12 points. Piercing damage. And that's the end of Arian's turn. Um, the there's pieces of bodies littering the bridge. Um, the, the, the the this ball of of limbs uh, hasn't grown any bigger, uh, but it's definitely uh, shriveled up. Uh, as if the, the 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 parts that make up its form, um, many of them have fallen and they've bled out. Uh, you're you're making progress towards uh, killing it, but there's still a ways to go. It's Sunny's turn. Mm. Well. Uh, yeah. Sure. 
We can't get there. But you can probably get close ish. Five and fifteen. Okay. Um, oh, it moved! I forgot the extra thunder damage from Virian's thing. Oh, yay. He teleported and then moved. Yes. <clears throat> and he was right here where he was before. So I was, I was looking at Crack's situation. Uh, 13 thunder damage. Cracks. Very good. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, this is the part where I started drawing things. Yeah. This section and this section are, are looking really rough. <clears throat> um, so when moving, I will ask you if you want to start avoiding these areas. Yeah. So like, count, count your movement again, but go around. Oh, sure. Turn. Unless you want to walk on it. I mean, that's your prerogative. You can? Nope. <laughs> 30. Hey, Virion. Um, Just chasing after it. <laughs> um, good, good job. Thank. Done. Okay. Brooke gets right. to roll a wisdom saving throw. All right, let me out. <laughs> I'm out. Twenty-one passes. I'm out. <clears throat> uh, you are being pulled in currently by all these hands that are stretching out towards you. Um, but finally, uh, uh, Tekka is like pushing you around a little bit. Uh, he gives you a small slap on, on, on the cheek. And that's the moment when uh, uh, your, your mind snaps back into focus. Uh, and you realize there's nothing to be afraid of. Well, there's a lot to be afraid of, but this isn't the nightmare that you think it is. Thanks, Tiger. I'm out of it. Okay. How many attacks do I have? You can take your turn. Um, okay. Your normal attack action is two, and the haste action is three total. Okay. That is a successful hit. So... One of that is Radiant. Mm -hmm. Also a hit. Four of that is Radiant. Twenty-three hits. <laughs> One of status radiant. <laughs> Brooke, how would you like to do this? Hey, nice. Even with the lowest roll plus a nice. war ride. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm assuming it still has a form out of the people, right? That it still its form. Nobody is currently frightened. Um, so it's essentially beginning to melt away. Uh, and everybody would catch glimpses of their own nightmares, their own things that are scared of, but it's just brief moments. They appear and then they disappear. It's like it's trying to hold on to a form, any form, but failing. Um, so, Brooke, you kind of see the bodies, but they're already going away. Well, <clears throat> whatever is left of the bodies, he would try to make it quick and the, then just with a few nice swings behead them. Beneath the sharp blows of your weapon, um, it no longer looks like you're cutting off pieces of people. It looks like you're cutting at darkness itself. Like smoke, it's dispersed by the glow of your weapon. 
Uh, and eventually what's left behind is a shapeless nothingness that tries to take on a form, but fails. And is dispersed into the air, leaving behind uh, uh, not a body, nothing. Phew. What would have otherwise been uh, silence following this conflict? It's uh, um, instead filled with the sound of ice cracking further and further and further. What is the party doing? Which direction do we have to go? This direction, right? Yes. I think Brooke would gesture to Sunny to hurry up to get over. It takes flight and, and helps to carry some of the, the heavier uh, folk across with, you know, Pontifex with his full armor and Mm. Aaron's probably got a 100 pound backpack. <laughs> Sunny here in the flapping of wings is just like booking it as fast as she can on her own two feet, uh, getting across the bridge and just shouting from <laughs> deep further into the cave I'm good! I'm fine! <laughs> Don't need any help! Yeah, we're just booking it, just hightailing it over the bridge like if I don't know Pip wants to pick up Virian at school but if not she'll I think she's comfortable like trying to just dodge it yeah mm -hmm. Beak tries to grab you but yeah. <laughs> if, no, if she the, looks like she's got it yeah the the ice under Virian's footsteps is just not affected at all uh, she's surprisingly light um, on the other elf. hand with uh, yeah yeah, it's the elven thing. <laughs> Pontifex, on the other hand, it's like his armor that's mainly the the issue. So he hitches the the ride, um, and as usual, um, Arian ends up getting like the least comfortable spot on the bird ride, um, just be being pulled by by his cloak, mm. having a bad time. Alan's um, right through the exposed rib cage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're all across and looking back and the, the bridge is still there it looks like you made it with like time to spare but you do see it beginning to crumble behind you bit by bit there was nothing left of the thingy nothing it's a good thing we don't have to get out of here ever right <laughs> huh? <laughs> I mean, looking at Pip, that shouldn't be a problem. It just might take a little bit more time. Sunny says, no, it's fine. I'll just stay here and die here and live here <laughs> and die eventually. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's worse places no. to be trapped for all no. eternity. No, bad, bad, bad. Stay back. No. <laughs> Um, do me a favor and uh, actually, I'll do this. Uh, I'm gonna call a break here, uh, because it's been about an hour and a half, so, uh, and I'll adjust the size of all of your minis myself in the meanwhile. And you can, you guys can go and stretch your legs and get a drink, and then we'll continue from here. Okay, all right, all right, okay, you guys did fine. Look at your health, it's not even, yeah, we're, we're doing great. It only hit us like twice. Yeah. That is that as our house? It only has twice. Its saving throws were concerning. <laughs> it, it, it was proficient in four saving throws. Wow. And uh, um, it, it's funny. Winter, I, have, I have a question. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, break time. <laughs> break time. <laughs> and bring the table back. Welcome back from our break. Um, I moved you all off screen because uh, I was changing maps. So and paper's not here. Here we go. Oh. Um, so you have gathered. You know this. Uh, you you have gathered on the opposite side from the chasm, watching the bridge slowly collapse away, 
Uh, Sunny is hiding behind Brooke, always making sure that Brooke is in between her and the giant bird. Um, <laughs> and you have survived the encounter. Um, is there anything you guys need to talk about before you move on? <laughs> or do wounds to heal? Yeah, bird just has a thousand yard stare after <laughs> that. <laughs> Okay, uh, then in that case, Sunny will speak up and say, Hey, hey um, Pip? No, 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 no. <laughs> stay, stay back, stay back. Just no more clowns. Yeah? Just nod. Nod at me, please. The bird pops up and down. No idea Nuts. what that means, but okay. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay, <laughs> good. That's all. I, that's all I needed to know. It's like one of those dancing, bobbing birds. Just you know, so now I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aaron is going to step ahead of everybody else and just points at where the cave continues forward um, and he says we need to keep going Come is on. everyone is everyone good to continue don't need to rest for a minute we're all good enough shape to keep going I wouldn't mind a rest, but... Maybe a, a little further from the bridge, just in case it... Austin, stop. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, I don't know if the where we're standing isn't structurally sound. I'd like to get a little further from here if we can. Yeah, if we can take a short break after that, that would be good. Then we keep walking, see what is in front of us. Um, with uh, Tekka agreeing, then Arin takes the lead. He goes a little bit, a little bit further into the cave, like a good five minutes away, uh, before finding an opening wide enough where everybody could comfortably sit down for a bit. The <clears throat> giant Nighthawk has to keep his wings really close to his body and just kind of have to squeeze through the tunnels for a while uh, until the opening where Arin stops. It's not big enough for the bird to spread its wings, definitely not wide enough to, to fly anywhere, uh, but at least it's not forced to, to have to squeeze anymore. Um, essentially, Everybody's in physical contact with a the bird. There's feathers everywhere. <laughs> we're going to take a break like like this. This is okay. Uh, this is what we're doing, I suppose. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just so warm as a bird. Is that an issue in the cave of ice? Uh, are you not cold? Somewhat. And I do not have feathers. What? What is this? <laughs> What is this? You haven't... You haven't seen Cirrus? It's... That's not the same one. We, 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 we'll be using a new model for a few yeah. sessions. What? 
Yeah, it's a, it's a floofier one. It's the first time I've noticed. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, it's very cute. I was like, Matt, I have a couple new minis for you. Pick one, and he picked this one. So yeah, it's adorable. That's fantastic. Very, very floofy. Um, for for my sanity, I didn't have, a, I didn't include Surface in the fight. She just like, you know, safely poofed away. But I imagine that the Pontifex brought her right back out, and um, she's she's kind of sticking really close to him. Um, like putting him in between herself and the rest of the group. Um, seems like cat behavior also seeking warmth, just really pushing herself uh, um, as hard as she can against his legs. When he sits down for a break, she is on his lap immediately. How long do we all need? An hour? Two hours. It is cold in here. We maybe shouldn't sit around for too long. An hour should be enough. I'm just gonna look through his Skyward dagger, uh, see what kind of time of day it is outside. The sun is setting. It's almost night time. We didn't get a very good sleep last night, if we want to try again. Are, are you all feeling ready to sleep? Uh, Aring and I can keep watch again. Professor wouldn't tell you this, but he's running low on magical energy for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Such a brave man to suffer in silence. <laughs> <laughs> Seraphis meows. Why don't we call it a day well spent then? We can take some time, you can rest. Hopefully this night goes better. No more clowns. Hopefully no more clowns. Sunny There might shutters. be more clowns. It's, it's a strong possibility that there are more clowns in here. I mean... I don't know about you, I've never seen a clown by itself before. <laughs> Do clowns mate for life? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Why do you make me think of these things? I will, um, I'll stay up first. I mean, With the elves. <laughs> so if, if you want to sleep, there's no reason for anyone else to stay up. I Me, mean, you're welcome to, but if you're tired, you can sleep. I'm all right. Are you sure, Pip? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pip's gonna sit over in a corner <laughs> of the room and start sorting through his rock collection, see mm -hmm. if any others have gone missing, and if any are, he interrogates everyone. <laughs> 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 Rummages through their stuff. Roll an investigation check. Ah, my favorite words. <laughs> Okay. First you count your rocks, and then you count them again, and then a third time just to be sure, and they're, they are, they're all here. And then you take a cursory glance at the rest of your belongings that are less important than your rock collection, and you don't notice anything missing. Okay. Pip is gonna wait to go to sleep until he can get a short rest first. Okay, yes. You're... <laughs> so, um... Anything else that needs to um, happen before uh, the beginning of the long rest? Anything you need to, you guys need to role play? You wanna talk out? And, uh, <laughs> what, what, Any traumas? Talk your trauma. To <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. Do you mean Let's just bottle up. <laughs> S swallow it deep down and let it fester. I do have one thing. 
uh, while everyone is awake or like at the, as the vessel right begins? before we go to sleep okay uh, what is it Pip is going to try and cast dream on the witch Let me read the spell real quick. Wow, hold on. I I need to resolve something before we continue uh feel free to fill the silence because i need this is, this is gonna take a moment what have i done i know <laughs> always causing problems <laughs> it's always me i wish we could have seen what everyone's afraid of <laughs> i think it's really interesting that the elves are immune I guess because they don't have nightmares? Maybe. I mean, you're not immune to being frightened, are you? No, just <coughs> an advantage on charm can't be put to sleep. Mm. I'm what resistant to necrotic, but that's just sub-brace. What if Ladaria is a nightmare? <laughs> Whoa. 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 <laughs> what if this is all a dream and we wake up next episode <laughs> <laughs> okay so I double checked um, you can do that Pip Austin um, oh, okay <laughs> um, you are you doing it on yourself are you the person who's yes. going to enter the trance okay so I will tell you that at the, at the moment of the casting, you would be able to tell that your target isn't asleep yet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, you can, yeah, you can wait it out. Um, so as everybody else, uh, as everyone is it done with their preparations. It wants to make it look as if he's <laughs> asleep when he's doing this. Like okay, he's you like lay down. bundled up in whatever mm -hmm. he has. <laughs> Arian look in the mirror and like I, I thought he wanted to be awake I mean you, you know how kids are they say they want to stay up late but then as soon as they get a chance they lay down they're out cold alright well I M don't have an objection uh, no they he needs some rest which everyone does also I know you said like you know how kids are but I well If you say so. Uh, as everybody else is falling asleep on, under the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> under the watchful eyes of the two elves. Um, un unknown to the rest of you. Pip is also awake, but essentially um, absent. Not really unconscious, but kind of. I think it says that you're aware of your surroundings. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. um, not quite asleep. Not quite awake. Not quite here, but not quite elsewhere. Uh, you, you feel your consciousness resonating across this cave system. The person you're looking for is somewhere close, somewhere very close, and in you sense her presence with with a, a sense that you're not familiar with, and it's uh, beyond description. You know she exists. You know she's close. You not you know that she is awake, and you wait. You wait for something to shift in your perception, not of your surroundings, but of the entire complex cave system that you guys are lost in. And then, eventually, even though time is a little difficult for you to um, to assess in this state, you feel that that shift, that change somewhere, somehow, 
and that's what you have been waiting for. And you reach for someone. The initial landscape that you find yourself in, uh, the landscape that you breach, is uh, of a, a familiar scene. Um, landscape of snow. It's cold, but in this state you don't feel the, uh, the cold in the way you should. Uh, it, it's not really biting at your bones. You see charred trees near you. An enormous mountain reaching up towards the clouds. It's dark, but you can see the silhouette of the environment around you against the backdrop of the starry sky. Uh, everything feels oddly normal. Very familiar and very just uh, normal. You see the... Uh, that the landscape is, is, is scorched. You remember your uh, adventures with Pontifex while waiting for everybody else to come down from the stone staircase. Uh, <clears throat> this area is the outside of the cave. Exactly the way you guys have left it. It doesn't feel dreamlike at all. It feels just like reality. And you see a figure approaching the edge of the burnt down uh, forest, bending down and moving the snow with her long, thin fingers, picking up some ashes and uh, rubbing them between her fingers. This very old woman with skin that looks more like the bark of a tree than actual uh, human skin uh, with this enormous mane of hair that has never known the touch of a brush in a lifetime she seems impervious to the cold uh, instead of uh, a strange alien colorful dreamy landscape you are in what for you is the waking world. Uh, what form do you take? Um, just Pip. Uh, Pip yeah, wait, is... Um... Mm -hmm. Sorry? No, go ahead. Pip is um, striding along towards her through the snow, and as he walks, he uh, envisions the landscape to change, if it will. Uh, he wishes for the snow to part in front of him, uh, creating a warm path beneath his feet as he makes his way towards the witch. Mm -hmm. uh, roll a... Uh, let's make it a... Hmm. What's your spellcasting ability? Is it charisma? Yeah, it's charisma. Yeah. Uh, roll a check with your... Uh, just with your charisma. Okay. That's a uh, 14. Okay. Um, you don't find it impossible to affect the landscape. You do find it a little bit harder. Um, whenever you dreamt alongside the, the pink tiefling from a long time ago, the first one who showed you how to alter the landscape of dreams to your liking, it felt a lot easier. And this feels very difficult. But the snow still parts. It's just taking a lot more effort than you had expected. Almost as if the snow itself was very heavy. Once Pip gets close enough to where she can hear, um, Pip is going to say, I'm sorry about the trees. I couldn't stop him from doing that. The woman slowly, she straightens her back to a certain degree. It remains uh, um, apparently permanently bent, at least a bit. 
she turns to face you. You see in one hand she has a, a basket. Uh, in the other one still the traces of the ash uh, on her fingers. Uh, when she looks at you, she she gives you a smile. Uh, roll an insight check. Insight check? Mm-hmm. Eight. She gives you an odd smile. One that doesn't feel very natural. There is no warmth in it. Uh, but it feels at least her, her um, behavior towards you feels non-threatening at the very least and not hostile. And says, I know you tried. And that's what counts, isn't it? You know, we're not here to harm you. That is not my task. But if you would allow me, there's some questions I would ask. You see her turn around to one side and deposit the basket, just l let it go onto a trunk of a fallen tree. And she says, I will give you five minutes. We have no use for games. We've had enough of fun. We'd like to come and see you. If your joy for games is done. You see the witch roll her eyes and say, Do you really have to speak everything in rhyme? Oh, I hate when my sister does that. Um... I just thought that's how we did it. I can stop if you want. Please. Five minutes. Four now. Can and why my... would someone as young as you be done with games? I've... I'll have time enough for play when I'm... When I'm free. I need to know. Can Granny see us here? My dreams are my own. I would never let her in. I know that your relationship with her isn't a good one. But she didn't send me here to hurt you. So you claim. And yet here you are. You see her near her eyes for a moment. Uh, but then her smile grows a little wider. And she says, I know why you came. It's not really for me, is it? Well, I... I think you might be able to help me. There's a lot of things that I don't know about my life, about Granny, but I think you do. Who is Aster? You see her tilt her head to one side and into the other. I may not see value in rhymes and riddles. There is one thing I want, and if it's answers you seek, then why not a trade? My life belongs to someone else. What more could you want from me? She chuckles and reaches back for the basket. She picks it back up. Actually, she doesn't pick it up. She leaves it on, on the on the tree trunk, and instead she uh, reaches for the contents of the basket, and she pulls out a doll. And uh, with this childlike glee, she holds the doll up to her chest with her arms crossed, 
holding it uh, really tightly. Um, the doll is like felt doll. Um, very, it's very fluffy. It's this uh, um, bright. Uh, the, you can you can tell that the original color of the fabric was white. It's just very dirty. So now it's more of a grayish brownish, but you can tell it was supposed to be white uh, at least once upon a time. Uh, and it is very obviously in the shape of not a wolf, but a werewolf. And she says, You finish the game that you started, and I'll tell you what I know. What game? What are you talking about? You have not forgotten my pet, have you? When you after say finish the game... After everything you've done to him, there's just one thing left to do. He's waiting for you. Fine. You put on a show for me, and I'll tell you everything. Consider it done. I believe my time is up. She giggles. Her voice is not young in the slightest, but the tone is still so full of vitality in, in a way that feels unnatural. Uh, like, it, it feels like at the, at the same time, you know you're looking at someone who is very, very old, uh, as old as, as Granny, and yet at the same time, something about her feels very young. But not in a way where you would say her spirit is young, her heart is young. It's something else, something that's just out of your understanding. Um... She takes a step forward, extends her arms, and, uh, and is holding the doll out towards you. Then go. Finish what you started. And make it fun. Takes the doll and shunts himself out of the dream. When Pip wakes up, the effigy that he made of the werewolf is in his arms. Pip sighs, just thinks to himself, you'll have your show. When, um, when Pip opens his eyes, um, everything is uh, normal in the cave. Most of the others are sleeping. You do see that uh, uh, Viren is currently standing. Aaron is going through his belongings. Um, you, as a result of you feeling this presence on your chest that wasn't there before you, you have moved back with, uh, like, facing towards the ceiling. Uh, you turn it from your side to onto your back. Um, and you notice both of the elves uh, noticing your motion and looking over towards you. Um, but there's otherwise nothing really going on right now. And the, the effigy looks normal. It turns on his side, and he clutches the effigy against his chest. And he is not going to sleep tonight, because he knows that if he does, the effigy will burn up. The tokens can't be used. He needs to keep them. Okay. Well, a perception check. <clears throat> I also want a perception check from Virion, and I'll be rolling one for Arin. Okay. <laughs> 
natural one. <clears throat> Are you keeping it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Don't need this music anymore. We can go back to this. Um, both uh, Viren and Arin will be able to tell that Pip is uh, uh, at no point during the night has made any actual attempt to fall asleep or has failed to do so. Uh, he just keeps turning around a lot. Uh, um, and every once in a while you, you do see him just open his eyes and blink and then turn back around again. Um, that's the only thing of note that happens within the cave. Uh, as uh, I actually rolled a natural 20 on RN, so <laughs> it also rolled really well and pipped in at one. Um, <laughs> I can, but I can tell the both of them uh, as they remain uh, also, obviously, awake during the night uh, um, that this time no creatures sneak up on the group. Um, so all there is to notice is just that Pip is awake and uh, that the others... Um, despite their attempts to sleep and seemingly being successful in doing so, um, everybody who is not an elf will still wake up the following day without the benefits of a long rest, just of a short one. So I need to roll for HP? Uh, if you, yeah, if you want to use your hit the dice, yes. Should have been elves. <laughs> oh, true. Pip does not get a point of exhaustion. Oh. Um, Dennis, once you're done also with uh, Sunny, mm -hmm. I uh, will ask you to roll a d6 for me. Oh shit, we told him to roll a d8. They'd have that ready, so he might need a minute to prepare. Oh, oh sorry, god. Dennis. Oh god. <laughs> so, I am a stray. <laughs> that has all been part of the plan, Rod. <clears throat> all right. It's a four. Okay. In the snow. Uh, as you're, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> as you're preparing, um, uh, as you're all awake and you you feel odd, not quite rested, but also not as exhausted as you would have expected after two days of not sleeping properly. Um, it it, it quickly becomes apparent as you all share information that just none of you really feels right. Um, you're beginning to pack your things. Um, Seraphis is sniffing Tekka's feet. Um, and uh, there comes a moment where she lunges to attack his tail. Um, in, in that way that, that cats do, it's not really uh, malevolent. She's just playing. Yeah, I think, like, Tekka will, like, turn around at first, confused, uh, and then, yeah, try to play along. So. <laughs> As she ascended. <laughs> I don't remember her flying. It's funny, we oh, just man. talked about this. Uh, but yeah, Seraphis no, it's, a, it's just a new... It's just a, a new-looking mini, because I had oh. a couple of nicer-looking ones, so I was like, here, Matt, pick one. 
Um, so she has a segment. She's floofy. Yeah. <clears throat> she did that bird thing that birds do when they make themselves all puffy when they're cold. Mm. <laughs> now she's um, just gonna say that way. Sid, could you repeat what you said? Uh, yeah. Uh, first, Tekka is just like turning around, confused at, at mm -hmm. what is happening, uh, and then tries to like play along with surface. Uh, your tail like instinctively flicks from one side to the other, uh, and surface goes crazy over this. Um, <laughs> since you're so fast and agile, um, and might as well like get some movement done, one for warmth and two uh, to wake up. Uh, you do a couple laps around the the interior of the cave, uh, and she flies after you. Uh, she there's a part of the cave that she won't approach, uh, and she inst instead of chasing you, she cuts through it. Um, but she's otherwise playing with you. Oh, is it a four? Hmm. <laughs> okay, we have a theme for today. Okay. Uh, uh -oh. Are all of you ready to go? Anything <laughs> you need to do? Any preparations? Orm will tell us a story. <laughs> or we'll tell you a story and you all can get your four temporary hit points. Let's go. When Orm recounts what happened the previous day, the story on his on his pages uh, paints you in a much more valiant and heroic uh, light. <laughs> Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't feel like in like it's in a patronizing way. He just believes in you. Ah. Feel bad. We never check on him anymore. <laughs> I mean, you can do it right now. No, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Orm does have a feature now that, like, we can know if there's something Orm wants to Yeah, say. so we never have to check on him again. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> has been using it a couple of times to check on you. Uh, I wouldn't narrate this because it would... For, for us as players, it would be a bit of a waste of time, but he is constantly making sure you guys are okay. After the bridge Aww. thing, he would have checked on you, uh, made sure that you all had calmed down and were ready to continue. Um, he... And he has expressed that he's war it's like he doesn't want to overuse it because he, he, he tries to get your attention when he feels like it's an emergency. But he's a dog, so he feels like a lot of things are emergencies. Uh, so whenever he's worried about you, that's an emergency. <laughs> that's fair. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you head down the uh, one single tunnel that this particular cave um, opens up into. Um, these passages that you find uh, yourself uh, traveling through. Oh, who's, who's taking the lead? That's important. Uh, Tekka will! Okay. Um, so you're, you're all following Tekka. Uh, Seraphis is done chasing his tail, so he is... Uh, she is firmly on Pontifex's shoulders at this moment. Um, she... Her demeanor is... She doesn't like this place. It's obvious to everybody. Every once in a while, she tenses up and hisses, um, kind of out of nowhere, uh, looking back towards the, the group. Um, and she is just staying as close to Pontifex as possible. Um, the the passages that you're faced with right now are very narrow, um, to the point where at some point you, you guys you can't have more than two people side by side, and you're forced to proceed just in single file. Uh, and there's constant turns. You're going up, and then you're going down. There comes a moment where the the floor, is, the incline, is so sharp upward that it's more of a climb than walking. Um, and Tekka can make it with ease and essentially help everybody else up one by one. And so progress is there. It's just very slow. Uh, your legs feel tired already, despite the fact that you have, you have just started um, this day's long walk. Um, Ontifex is uh, uh, very bravely not complaining about his absence <laughs> of magic. 
Um, and Pekka is the first person because he, his hearing is uh, beyond everyone else's right now, but he hears something, and it's not a sudden thing that he picks up on. Uh, it's not like there is a, a moment when there is a new sound, but rather he realizes slowly over time that the the sound of the group's footsteps is accompanied by something else. Something that sounds like whispers. Um, briefly after Tekka notices it, everybody else also is beginning to hear just these whispers far away. Uh, you can hear the like the S sound a lot. You can tell there's voices, but they're far the distance. They're they're soft. Uh, the passageway is widening up a little bit, um, and you're able to hu huddle together a bit more. Uh, what would you like to do? Is it possible just, like, I think Varian would, after, like, people tech or once we start hearing the whispers, just kind of, like, hush everyone to see if we can maybe pick up more on what they're saying if we, like, really, really, really put our minds to it and focus on it. Varian would suggest this to everybody? Yeah, just, I want to be really quiet for, like, five minutes. <laughs> um... The group quiets down. You can just hear Seraphis growling, and then Pontifex pats her and she stops. And the whispers continue. They're so distant that uh, only some of you have a chance of understanding what they're saying. Uh, so I'll let Tekka, Virion, and uh, uh, I'll roll for Arin, roll a perception check. Oh, I should roll with advantage on that, right? Or no? Uh, yeah. It's, uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's hearing based. Then that's a okay. 20. Nice. Um, on, a, on a dirty 20, you're the only one uh, who can start to pick up on some words. Um... Uh, let me roll on this real quick. One, two. Okay. Uh, the... You pick up on some words uh, that uh, speak in Plurnan. Um, a very far away distant male voice saying the words around here somewhere. And you hear a voice replying, that one too far for you to understand, but it sounds feminine. They are two. They are looking for something. What do you mean they are there too? Can, can you talk a little more plainly? There are two voices they speak in Plurna. One brighter, one darker. They are searching for something. Do you know what they're searching for? No. No. These voices are far, far away. You keep paying attention and you hear the words again around you somewhere. And they have exactly the same inflection, they're pronounced exactly the same way. It's an echo. 
there's a conversation going on or fragments of a conversation and then they appear to be repeating just over and over and over and they are growing fainter This cave is telling their words over and over again. I hear nothing new, but the same words. There is nothing more to be gained from this. And I think Tekka will start walking again. A head I, towards sure? the noise, or um, there's multiple passageways, so you have the option of heading towards where the whispers are, or away from them. Probably, yeah, I think toward. Okay. Uh, go on, Jory. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, I was just gonna um, gonna ask if it was worth not worth checking it out, but we're checking it out, so we're gonna check mm -hmm. it out. <laughs> Okay. Same hat. <laughs> um, Taka, the, the whispers essentially are barely changing volume because they're they're moving further away, but you're moving towards them. Um and when you realize that they're growing fainter again, you try to pick up speed, um, almost as if chase after them. Uh, until eventually you reach a cave where you come to a sudden stop because you spot movement. Uh, it's not particularly big. Um it's kind of roundish in shape. Uh, it, much like the greatest majority of the, ga of the cave thus far, it's empty. There's just ice formations on the ground and on the ceiling. The walls are, for the most part, uh, um, smooth-ish. They just have a natural shape to them. Uh, and the movement you noticed was not of a... of something. Not exactly. You saw shadows on the wall flickering and moving off their own accord and uh, you spot the two particular shadows that react to you guys as source of, sources of light um, and it was just for a moment you saw the shadows of two vaguely humanoid figures um, adults about similar height um, just moving from uh, uh, across the wall uh, as if in your direction and vanishing when your light uh, shined on them. Uh, yeah, take a little look back. I imagine maybe gate a little bit um, on them, but it's waiting for me to catch up. Um, you have a base speed uh, that, if I remember, nobody else can match. Uh, yeah. So you were ahead of the party a little bit, and they, they arrived just seconds after you, but not in time to catch the movement of the shadows on the wall. So when everybody else pours in into this area, the whispers are gone, the shadows are gone, nothing is out of place. It's just an empty cave. This could be another of the cave's tricks, but I believe there are two people ahead. I, Why I mean, they would be here, I do not understand. Uh, not, not to. I mean, I, I, I believe you, but I don't see or see anything. Are you sure you didn't imagine it? Might as well. With the sleep I have had in this cave, it may as well all be a dream. I, I know, I know most of you haven't, you know, been resting well. Uh, maybe you should leave the exploration to Arn and I for a while. Let us take lead. Then go. Whatever I saw was by that wall. I got points to what looks like a perfectly normal wall. This wall? Pip knocks on it. 
It's solid ice. My knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, um. It, it, like the majority of the cave walls thus far, you can see that it's a layer of ice, and behind it there is the actual proper stone wall. Uh, and it's not distinctive in any way. It's much like everything else you've seen thus far. Virian will get up to the wall and sort of give it a look over, see if there's anything, uh, like weird cracks, secret mm -hmm. doors, anything. Both, both Pip and Virian can roll your choice between survival and investigation. I'm good at both of these. Sorry, Virian and who? Pip. Oh, okay. Since he went up to the wall and knocked on it. Doing great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 13. Okay. Uh, for, for both of you, the wall seems perfectly normal. You go from one side of it to the other. Uh, the yep. cave does continue. Like, this particular area has uh, uh, two different other openings in addition to the one you came from. And uh, yes, it is indeed just a wall. Uh, Pip, you do sense in the air the faintest, faintest trace of magic. Not like there's something here that is magical, but more like there was a magical effect that uh, took place in this area very recently. And you can't quite put your finger on it, but for some reason that magic feels familiar. Like something you've already seen or experienced in some manner before. But that's all you can tell. To, to be in there's absolutely nothing going on here. Um, whatever went on here, I don't think it's happening now. I mean, I'm... There's a whole lot of nothing here, to be honest. Is there a further way to go? Is there more ahead, or do we have to backtrack? Sorry, I was just thinking about what you just said. <laughs> is, is there, like, <laughs> further ahead, or is there... Yeah, or there's two more. End. There's two more tunnels that uh, lead from this place, and then there's the one you came from. There's like three tunnels that converge into this area. So, what do you think? Do we assume this was just big of our imaginations? Head back? Do we go further in? I am under the belief that the cave is leading at leading us where it desires. I do not think we have control. So, mm. pressing on then, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I mean, unless anybody hears anything... Tekka's going to turn around and stab the effigy once. <laughs> Tekka? What? You said Tekka's <laughs> going to turn around and stab the... <laughs> What? Oh, I meant to say Pip. Who <laughs> am I? Pip's gonna Unless. turn around and stab the effigy once. <laughs> the, the, the werewolf effigy. Yeah. Uh, which normally would do psychic, psychic damage. damage. Nope, nobody hear anything. That's a very yeah, good idea. Good. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, nobody would hear anything, yes. <laughs> you, you all just see Pip turn around and stab one of his dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Pip, I, I know you didn't sleep well last night, but maybe you should give me your knife for a while. No, it's my knife. <laughs> yes, and that's the problem. 
You don't think I should have a knife? I mean, see you've already have. been sending sending rats to the doom. You froze a frog to the floor. And now you're stabbing dolls. Honestly, I'm a little worried about you. I've always stabbed dolls. I've stabbed dolls since before I met you. Maybe we should have taken that this as a is, sign. This is my baseline. You know, normal people don't stab dolls, Pip. Wow. Well. Depends on the job, I guess. <laughs> if you're a doll doctor, I need to repair one. Most doctors don't stab people. Well, <laughs> it's about a doll doctor. Before before we get into another one of these, let's just keep going. Go on ahead. I can take lead this time. I give the rest of you a break. Uh, Tekka, do you let Viren take the, the lead? Mm -hmm. Paul Surgeon. Mm, I guess I'm not a very normal person then, huh? <laughs> I'm just an abnormal person. Stabbing dolls everywhere I go. Well, find them. Whatever, Viren. <laughs> not like I, I don't care. I don't remember if we mentioned this for Dennis, but since Squeak is missing, the voice of Pip is coming out of the Squeak doll that you guys have found. Oh. Also, Squeak is missing. I don't know if we mentioned that part. We did right. mention that Squeak I is missing. I think you mentioned that in the Amaria to start. Not my fault that all my friends are dolls or drowning in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know you don't think of us as your friends, then. What? How did you hear me? I was being so quiet. I'm an elf. <laughs> you oh, see these ears. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I mean, you should, maybe you shouldn't say things you don't mean, then. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Very just I'm sorry. walks right through one of the tunnels. So, uh, Joey, roll, roll a d6 for me. Sure. I consider most of you my friends. This is fine. Okay. This is either the best or the worst. All right, we're taking that. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Okay. There are no words to describe the monotony of the landscape that you guys travel through. It keeps feeling like it's, it's just the same. The same passages, the same turns, the same ups and downs. At the very least, you don't end up being attacked by anything. You don't you don't come across any living creatures whatsoever. It's just hours of nothingness, of walking and getting more and more tired, and like feeling like you have no idea how much progress you're even making. Um, it's impossible at this point for any of you to know how far you have come through this cave system how much longer you have to go how tired you even are it's honestly becoming all a bit of a blur and the the boredom and a bit of also of just the uncertainty of not knowing just how much more there is to go you, you try to fight it off you have little conversations um but everybody's on edge and the the talks that emerge from from this journey are not uh, um just are not noteworthy not <laughs> noteworthy uh in the slightest um at this point it almost feels like you've been down here for weeks rather than days um nothing significant happens you stop for a break, and then you resume traveling, and then you stop again for another break. Um, there comes a uh, pip, you just, over and over, you keep checking with your magical dagger. Uh, you look through the hole in the ring-shaped sha uh, uh, pommel of your dagger, um, and you hold it up, and it feels like the sun is barely moving, and then... There comes a moment when you have no idea how long it's been since the last time you checked. Uh, and you hold up your dagger again, and the majority of the day has passed. 
without anything uh, bad happening to you guys, but also nothing found. It's just a, a, a from what Pip finds out, it's, it's only perhaps a couple more hours until the end of the day. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we're almost there. This cave can't be that big, can it? No, I'm... I don't... I don't even care about how long it takes to get there. I'm just thinking about how long the way back is. Maybe there'll be a shorter way out somewhere. Another yeah. door. I was about to say, if we're lucky, maybe Gemma has visited this place before. <laughs> and that's another door. Skyrim rules at the end of the dungeon, there is a shortcut. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Boy, I don't hear anything. Do you guys hear anything? Stab stall. <laughs> <laughs> Could you, like, maybe warn me before you do that? It's honestly really unnerving. <laughs> do what? <laughs> the stabbing the doll thing. It's, How it's do you keep what seeing you says me? <laughs> You're doing it while right holding in front of me. a dagger and a doll. <laughs> You're not even trying to hide it. You're also, like, being, like, really obvious that you're about to do it because you just talk about hearing things in this really, like, vague way where it sounds like you're expecting something and then well, you stab the doll. maybe they can't hear anything because you're talking. We should try now I have the doll to stab again. it again. <laughs> Four, three. Stab it okay, again. I counted that. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> and two. The next one will be a one. Uh, <laughs> there's no sound coming from anywhere. Just the shuffling of your own companions. Oh. Well, we just keep walking. Did you keep. How how are all you faring? Are you? Do we need another rest? Do you need to try to sleep again, or do you just want to? Do we press on? Hope we're almost there. Did we get sleep anyway? Maybe third time's a charm. You know. I like your optimism. <laughs> so I'm. Honestly, I'm doing, aside from honestly being a little weirded out right now. So we've been able to rest. So I'll, I'll leave it up to the rest of you. Pip, after this your cave. dream spell. Oh, uh, go ahead, Sid. Sorry, didn't uh, mean to talk over you. This cave will not let us rest. It only traps us longer in this wretched place. That was all. You can continue. Um, Pip, hearing hearing what Taka said, uh, there's a there's a part of you that feels like something is off. Um, after the after your dream spell, uh, after your interaction with uh, the witch, if she wants you guys to put on a show. This place that she, where she lives, sure seems to not be helping you achieve that. There's this feeling that something is off. It checks the dagger one more time. What time of day is it? A, a couple of hours before nighttime. The sun is lowering, but it's not close to the horizon yet. How long have we been walking? Because I've been checking this dagger every once in a while. And I feel like we've been walking for like five days. But it's still not nighttime. Your guess is as good as mine. 
I mean, we haven't stopped to rest yet. We haven't, you know, at least I haven't needed to. I'm sure you all do. What if, but what if we, what if when we went down to lay to sleep, what if we never woke up? That's called dying. Boo! <laughs> Boo! <laughs> nah! Wake up! Pip. Wake up! Pip, 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 calm down. I, I don't know Pinch what you're myself. on about, but I... <laughs> just, well, it just hurts. Just... I get out my knife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Drop it. Pip, what you have? didn't work. <laughs> Let me see what you have. I have to use my knife. <clears throat> okay. We're uh, getting the... nowhere. Ar Aaron is going to put both of his uh, hands on your on, on Pip's shoulders. No. I, no. I, Pip. Pip, we have uh, gotten hurt multiple times already in, in this journey. And, and there's no reason why you should cause any of this harm. I wasn't going to hurt you. Don't hurt yourself either. I... Ah! <laughs> you run in little circles, run around <laughs> with a knife in end. So sick of this cave! Pip, why don't you trade that knife against that uh, looks for a thingy where you can watch, look into the dream world and check this place out? Um, oh, whoa, well, if I look through the knife and through the gym at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. This is like when you hold up your phone to a pair of binoculars to take a picture of something far away. Wait, I've never tried that. It works? Mm -hmm. Wow. Then you buy binoculars and carry them around with you. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna look through the gem of dream sight. Both through the dagger and not. Okay, well, um, if you if you hold up your, your gem to your dagger and you look at the sky, there wouldn't be a difference. The sun's been the same Whoa. place. Um, moved like three inches. <laughs> <laughs> um and just looking through the gem and looking around, there is no difference whatsoever between what you see through the gem and what you yes, see without it. Guess what, everybody? It's nothing! <laughs> I'm gonna bash my head into the wall. <laughs> That's going to be cold. I... I will... Where are we going? <laughs> Arian leaning towards uh, towards uh, I, I don't want to talk to myself towards Brooke. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, is he prone to these fits of madness? Um, I think some might call it purity. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's going that puberty through. Puberty was about a century ago. I hardly, hardly <laughs> remember it. Well, he's definitely I, going through something. I don't remember bashing my head on a wall uh, at any point. Well, I'm pretty sure everyone experiences it differently and seeing how he's in very special circumstances mm, with us and it, no one of his age around. If, if you say so. Not that familiar with kids. <clears throat> <laughs> hmm. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, uh, everybody, all aboard the gnome train. <laughs> pew, pew, pachoo. What? Oh. Pew, are you pew, pachoo. Are, are we certain this isn't? This is just lack of sleep, and he hasn't completely gone off the rails. Do we need to do something about him? Arian says, I... We should just go. We're, 
this is time being wasted. Uh, well, Sunny very intensely says, No, 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 no. Pip is trying to figure something out, and he's right. I mean, we've... How much longer are we going to do this? Just walk and walk and walk. We have no idea where we're going. We have to find a better way of finding a way around here. I mean, not, not for nothing, but it's a tunnel. There's only so many ways we can go. There is no chance that anyone who actively lives down here needs to walk for days to get outside. I mean, if I didn't want anybody visiting me, having to walk days through the most boring cave in existence would deter a lot of unwanted guests, I'm sure. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I've figured it out. <laughs> I understand. Pip slowly returning. I open my eyes. The lair. The lair we saw. The lair was... It, it was an illusion. What if the... What if the entire cave system is an illusion? I hear a dog right now. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> I We just need to open our eyes. On three. One. Two. Three. Cave is an illusion. It should be disappearing now. <laughs> Y'all look around. No idea what Pip is on about. Nothing changes. <coughs> All aboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got no better idea. I'm not sure what else we can accomplish by looking at all of the walls. Maybe we'll find something soon. Just keep going. Pip starts marking the walls with his dagger. <laughs> it makes this <clears throat> really loud screeching noise as it goes. Every time, just... Ee! Um... Maybe sticking the lead or someone else? I was like, we're boarding. Oh, <laughs> <Lord. laughs> Alright. Uh, Sunny looks unhappy with this, but she eventually just follows. Um, who's taking the rear? Uh, Viren will hang back a little bit just to make sure nothing sneaks up on us. That's fine. Um,. That's all I need. Who's in front and who's in the back? Uh, Austin, roll a d6. Choo choo. <laughs> Five. Okay. Uh, one moment. Oops. Back in Lita, they would do something called fishing, where they would just sit on a boat for hours and try and catch fish. I'd rather be fishing. <laughs> 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 okay. Pip, roll a survival check. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Fifteen. You're keeping that? <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Yes. Wow, that was so easy to just get, like, <laughs> to scare you. <laughs> You're in all of our heads. <clears throat> hey, but at the very least, you know that you're not going in circles, because every once in a while you leave a marking on some eyes. 
and then you keep going and then you leave some uh, another mark on the eyes on the walls on any piece of what feels like might be um, a landmark an unusually shaped stone uh, anything really that catches your attention you feel like you would recognize again uh, and every single time you do like sorry let me let me phrase that uh, as you keep progressing there isn't a point uh, where you ever find uh, your own markings again so you know that you're proceeding somewhere but for the rest of the day you find nothing you check through the dagger a couple more times until you can see that the sun is setting there is nothing you have found today nowhere you have gotten you have just built up exhaustion lays down on the floor <laughs> <laughs> you guys follow Pip until at some point he just he doesn't fall over he just <laughs> sits down and leans back and he's now just on his back looking up at the ceiling he, all of you are just kind of miserable the monotony of the landscape is something that's really hard to get past um, you have no idea which way you're going or if you're going the right way. It feels like you figure some kind of progress has been done, but it feels like nothing. Um, despite the fact that you haven't gotten into like a any dangerous battle or anything of the sort, at least for today, you feel very, very miserable right now. I have had enough of this. Yeah. Virion. Yes? Hand, hand me Orm. Uh, here. Um, you can yell at him, I guess, if it'll make you feel better. She'll hand the book over. Orm, I need you to remember. Did Jamuel ever say something about this tallest mountain here? About this cave? About his never, never ending tunnel? Um, who wants to roll a percentile? Someone's gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can do it. Yes, just 2d10s. 5% chance. Um, so 96 or above. That is a 14. Is that 14? Yeah, I think so. The one's still vibrating, but it looks like a 14 yeah, to me. Vibrating. Uh, Tekka, you've been walking for so long that, and you haven't had like what felt like proper sleep yet that uh, uh, your your sight is almost uh, blurred but you stare with such intensity at this book you almost feel like it's shivering in your grasp uh, and as the ink begins to collect itself on its pages uh, um, only a small number of words show up There is nothing. Why? Why is there nothing? What were they looking for? They said it's around here somewhere. So what were they looking for? Why? Why would they be here in this cave with no escape? That, that must have been it. The escape. There's a way out of here. That's what they were looking for. We have to go back, don't we? 
But where would we look? We want to go back the way we came. That what it was a, a day ago, two days now. How long has it been? A year. We want to walk back an entire year. I'm a teenager <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> So we're gonna, so we're gonna spend the whole a whole year walking back. And then I'll be, I'll be fourteen. And then if we're wrong, we spend another year going back, and I'll have to get married soon. <laughs> I don't want to get married. <laughs> Not yet. Have you come back here at all? I don't. I don't want to do that. Well, you're fine stabbing it. Are you... S I, I'm sorry if you're, you're treating it like it's a living thing sometimes, but not other times. I'm just a little confused. You don't understand. No one understands. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we try to rest a little bit, clear our heads, uh, come back when we're hopefully a little more with it. Sunny uh, just throws first. her hands in the in the air and says, "Rest that I can't even sleep properly." Maybe if I you just, just try a little harder. I... That's easy for you to say. All you do is close your eyes for two minutes and you're done. Have you tried doing that? We take that as a no. Maybe you should. Even you're not helping. I'm, I'm stuck in here with as long as the rest of you are. I, mean, I suppose if he wants, uh, you, I can, I can go. Like we can, I can leave if that's fine. What are you, you talking about? Why would you leave us? I mean, if you'd rather, I can. I mean, I can say it's fine. It's up to Sunny, I suppose. No, that's... Uh, it's obviously not what I meant. I just feel like... Moving, walking the way we have has not done anything for us. Maybe there's something else we have to do. I mean, I don't know anything about magic, but, like, aren't there things, like, you say... You say passwords and, and things change? Or... Uh, I mean, Pape's idea of everything being an illusion is starting to sound pretty... Like there is a chance of it being true. We're missing something. The Whispers, they were looking for something. They were not trying to recall a word or a phrase they were looking what have we missed so you're saying we should backtrack then I think that will just exhaust us even further Everyone is feeling on edge. Even Seraph is, is seemingly uh, upset and is, has resumed growling. Pontifex checks with her whether there's something invisible nearby, but uh, he confirms that there isn't. Just letting you know, because Matt would, would would have done this for sure. There was the, uh, Oh yeah, Dennis, there was the entire reason why Seraphis was also summoned, because she can see invisible things. Just mm -hmm. in case. Uh, but yeah, there's at no point has she signaled that it was something invisible with you guys. Brooke. Yes? Pass to the other world. That has to work. Something else than this. No, there's nothing over there, tech. I already there. looked. There has to be something. I can go. 
But that's why I w well, that's why I let Pip look. I can check, have a quick look around, see if I see anything. Karin <clears throat> says, "Don't waste your your magic, Brook." Pip says, "There's nothing. Then there's nothing. It's pointless. We have to focus on something else." Hey, Orm. Is there a door down here? A brief, unhelpful reply appears on the pages. Even the ink on Orm's pages appears... Um, I guess mudge is not quite the right word, but it's almost like you can feel the book's exhaustion just in the way it writes. It's the the writing is not quite as straight as usual. So All right, that... oh. it's time to get out the rocks. Oh, rocks, great and powerful. <laughs> if we continue on this path, how will we fare? Everyone sees Pip tossing some of his rocks around. It takes 10 minutes, right? Yep. <laughs> he keeps repeating the question over and over. Uh, the rest of you discuss your options a bit further, but end up nowhere and just wait for him. Um... The rocks are exactly as helpful as Orm, your book, was. In the sense that uh, um, between good outcomes and bad outcomes, uh, you find that it's uh, neither good nor bad. Just throws a rock at the wall. <laughs> you toss a rock at the wall and you feel bad afterwards. <laughs> um, Tekka has uh, put on the mask he got from the Atarava tribe and is just repeating the whispers <laughs> again and again oh um, if I recall that mask repeats like sounds to like perfection right? yep mimic sounds you have heard including voices okay so with everyone gathered around Tekka, as he puts on the mask and uh, begins to mimic the, the whispers that he claims to have heard um, to the best of his ability, which, like, it, it, I guess that's the wrong way to put it. The mask makes it perfect. Um, and all of you feel like this odd sensation in the back of your mind, and you all gather around him. And the more Tekka repeats those few words that he picked up on, the more you guys realize, like, each one of you coming to this realization at your own time, that that's a familiar voice. It sounds... It's hard to tell, but, like, multiple people point this out at once, and you realize that you're, you, feel, you feel pretty confident. It sounds like Arin's voice. What? Aaron, have you been here before? No, I... I never have. Wait, okay, so it, it sounded like Aaron's voice and then there was a... There was a female voice, right? Um, me yeah, with the M, I'm telling you it's correct. Um, that one is just... You can only tell as much as Tekka was able to tell, which is feminine, but it's just like you, you can hear the difference in pitch between the two, and that's pretty much all you can pick up on. Maybe... Maybe it's giving, like, the echo of things to come, and... Uh... Okay, Aran, say... Say, um... It must be around here somewhere. The, uh, 
It must be around here somewhere. Oh, I heard something move. <laughs> <laughs> you glance what around expecting you? something, perhaps a secret passage, but nothing has changed in your surroundings. Arin just looks a little uncomfortable. Now a woman has to say something. If only there was a woman here. Did it work? <laughs> <laughs> I... I don't know what we're trying to get out of this. I'm, I'm sorry. I think it was just, like, the, the cave playing tricks on us again. It has to mean something. Does the, the mask do what you heard or what you think you heard? Uh, I'll, I'll answer this for you, Sid, in case the... I don't remember if, uh, how clear I gave you the description, but it is exactly the replica of the sound as it happened. When it was tested, when I, we were first given this, it is as experienced, not as remembered. It is not changed by time. So, as far as I see things right now, we have four options, three more viable than the other one. Um, one, we can keep going. We can press forward and hope that we're close to wherever we need to be. The second is we can rest and hope that we can come at this with hopefully clear heads in hopefully the morning. The third is we trek backwards for who knows how long and hope we can go back to where we heard those voices and find something clearer. If we go back, there is one thing to be learned. Pip's carvings. If they are still there. Yeah, we could just go back to the first carving. Another thing I thought of, and I'm a bit rusty on what the thing can do, is that we still have the gem of creation, and I don't know what its limits are. But maybe if we wish for like a way out, <laughs> and that isn't too vague. I don't know, a hole appears? A door? It's can we hole. wish for... Is a hole something that you create? I don't know. Or is a, hole, is a hole the object of destruction? A hole is not where you live. A hole <laughs> is not where you live. <laughs> I don't know if it would work. Like, I don't know if it would work if I said to this gem, like, hey, give me a door to Gemlot's tower. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All Look, right. I I would be scared of playing around with something that powerful, but I'm beginning to be at the end of my wits. That's a good idea. Let's what? probably <laughs> last resort, but <laughs> I want to get out of here. Everybody right. sit down. I'm talking to the, I'm going to talk to the witch. It's <laughs> like it's almost nighttime. <laughs> Ah, cast a dream again. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you sure you want to do this? Because it is. Wait, no, 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 no. It is the the sun is setting now, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, because because you were a couple of hours away from sunset, and then you kept walking, and yeah. now it's after that. Okay. Uh, yeah. then that's fine. Everything quiets down around you. Uh, the rest of you see Pip sitting down and then closing his eyes. Almost. <laughs> uh, um, 
it almost feels like he's entering a, a trance not unlike what the elves can do. Uh, and you're just kind of left there to stare at him and you all look at each other and you're a little bit too scared of talking to one another just in case they might mess with his magic. Uh, and... Um, let me, let me roll for that. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's fine, that makes it easier. <clears throat> Um, the environment that you project yourself into, Pip, is not too dissimilar from yesterday's. Uh, it's just in a different uh, location, but it's still clearly the area outside of the cave. Um, you can still see the scorched trees. You're just further into the part of the forest that has not uh, been uh, armed by mm -hmm. Pontifex's spells. <clears throat> Um, and your oh. magic takes you. <laughs> I'm just separating you from the group. I'm sorry. Um, your magic takes you straight to her. Um, and this is a bit of an odd sight, uh, as you find this clearly old woman dangling from a tree branch, upside down, like holding her weight just with her legs, with like the back of her knees. Uh -huh. uh, her hair is pulled down by gravity, but it is exactly the same as when she stands uh, straight up. <laughs> There's no difference. Uh, and she's letting just her arms dangle, uh, almost touching the ground, but not quite, just uh, perhaps a foot away from, from it. Um, and she's giggling to herself as when you arrive. As soon as Pip sees her, he says, Hey, what gives? <laughs> Puncher! <laughs> I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> Pinata! <laughs> oh, where's my music? <laughs> you know, I, I, last night I came to you and I said we were not here to hurt you. We're all starting to rethink that now. <laughs> and what appears to be the problem exactly? We've been walking through this same tunnel for what feels like days. Mm. If you want to show, you're going to need to get us to the theater. Or perhaps this is the show. I don't know why you're so upset. I'm having a great time. Well, I'm starting to see why my granny doesn't like you so much. Oh, child. I would say that that wounds me, but your despair, it tastes so delicious. Oh, that's your game then, huh? You entered my home. Why should I owe you anything? You're here, here to kill my pet. And I'm even giving you permission to do so. But I'm not going to make it easy. I want to see you struggle. I want to see you suffer. I want to feast on your misery. And I've been having... A handful of delicious meals these last few days. Keep it up. Keep them coming. Yeah. Hip's gonna wake back up from his trance. And, uh, he's going to say, he's going to smile and look at everybody. <laughs> that is so odd for the rest of the party. <laughs> Just like Pip closes his eyes, sitting 
for a few minutes, for about five, and then eyes suddenly open and he just smiles. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, God, he's possessed. No, no. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, uh, guys, everything's great. I know the way out now. <laughs> Cheer up. How? How do you know the way? Don't worry, she told me the way. Cheer up. What's the way? Just follow me, we're gonna head back, but just for what? a bit, okay? Wait, what, did, what do you mean she told you? Who told you, what? The witch. Why would she tell you? Don't worry, Aaron. hey, it's okay. No, 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 listen. I'm very worried right now. Oh, listen. Okay, okay, I'm listening. <laughs> listen. Everything bad that you think you've ever done in your life, I forgive you for it. And I... maybe you should too. Oh no, this is making me very uncomfortable. Brooke! Pip, are, hey. are we going no, to die? I don't Pip. like this. <laughs> Virian. Virian. You're gonna remember everything someday. And when you do, you're going to see a life well lived. You have so much to smile about. This really sounds like we're dying. I really just want to see you <laughs> smile. You should smile more. Are you dying? Hey, Brooke. What? You know, you and Tekka were the first people that I ever met on this journey. And I'll never forget it. It's been really great getting to know you both. Cheer up. Hey, we're... We're on this journey together, and nothing is going to put the 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 downs on my my damper. Aaron says, like "I hate everything about this." Hey, well, Sunny hey, seems hey. to be on board. <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> <laughs> Sunny seems to be on board and says, "No, no, Pip, please continue. I want to hear what you have yeah. to say about me." Sunny, Pip. your name, your name. Really suits you, cause you're ah, a ray of sunshine, here, and you always brighten up my day. She picks you up and spins you around once, <laughs> and puts you back down. Now that's you know what? the um, that's how we should uh, be acting. I think that Squeak will will laugh about having been turned into a doll. I think that when he comes back, he's gonna be like, "Oh, ha ha ha! That was that was so funny when that happened." And Professor. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> why are you, why are you he looking says at something like good that? about everybody that we goes up to Pipe Effects. Uh, hey! <laughs> you look really nice and moist today. <laughs> I mean, Sunny, Sunny sees Pip, Pip struggling and she adds, um, Your beard is excellent. You're clearly taking good care of it. Love your new look. I mean, I'm all for this sudden change of tune, but hey. I remember not too long ago you Shush. did say that your, your only friends were dolls and <laughs> That's something not else. You, I you was, did say that. You, it, well, you did say that. Shush. I was going through a hard time, <laughs> like we all are. But you know what, Virian? What? Hard times always pass, and things are looking up for us. So come on. Get, get a kick in your step, cheer up, chin up, put a smile on your face. We're going to face this together <laughs> like we always have and win the day. I'm pretty sure we are all going to die right here. It starts marching back. <laughs> Arian and... says, I, I preferred when he was running around with a knife. That would that Come felt on, be dangerous. happy. Let's go. Let's go. Put it, <laughs> let's do it. Sunny's on board. Sunny's on board. Sunny, Sunny's like ahead of you. <clears throat> Come on, if, if we can't get any follows, sleep anyway. Are you sure we trust this? I mean, what if, he is, what if he is possessed? <laughs> well, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna beat us all? No. He could stab, stab you. He could stab you. He does have a knife. Period. I stab myself daily. Yeah, you know to stop. <laughs> <laughs> What's the harm with that? <laughs> Listen, this is a better idea than having no idea and getting in each other's throats. Virian, you're a great person, and I've always appreciated how you treat me like like I'm not just a child. But Let's you go! Are a child. Shush! 
Be happy. Let's go. Is Tekka going? Yep. Tekka believes in Pip. Everybody happy? Okay. We good? Um, Cheer up. You know, I feel like... Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think of what uh, Matt would do. And maybe there might be like a casting of Detect Magic from Pontifex just to make sure that... Because <laughs> the, the change in behavior is obviously odd. And it, like... During this entire time, he might have been just in the, in the middle of just ritual casting it uh, until it's finally done. And uh, content that there doesn't appear to be any magic on Pip that, that Pontifex can detect, that it is obviously unusual. Uh, he will let everyone know and follow along. As Pip's, uh, you know, walking back, he just thinks to himself, Feast on that. <laughs> <laughs> Harin is just giving Viren this confused and scared look. Same. She's. Do we go after them? Do we let them wander off? Keep an eye on them? Uh, we can't let them wander off on their own. Of course Come not. On. Let's, Let's go. go. Uh, with Pip. And Sunny firmly in the lead. Um, then the rest of the group and then the two elves. Uh, you make your way back about 10 or 15 minutes to the first spot where there should be a marking from Pip's dagger. And there isn't. You recognize the landmark where like where you were supposed to have to have left it. There was a um, you had picked this rock. Uh, Rocky was a it was a bundle uh, pff, words it was like this big formation of ice um, and the, the the piece of ice itself that was coming up from the ground it's a um, stalagmite uh, you scratched it and all the stalagmites stalagmite are still there uh, minus the top half of the one you marked which is broken broken. Yeah, broken off. Like, the top half of the stalagmite is missing. Huh. Alright, let's keep going. <laughs> Have I ever told you guys about all the things I want to do <laughs> when I get this noose off my neck? <laughs> I'll tell you on the way. First, I want to go to a bakery, and then... <laughs> uh, Pip, you keep going to... Um, you eventually make your way to where you simply remember leaving another mark in the ice that covers the wall, in the outermost layer of frost. Uh, and uh, a, a that section of ice has been shaved off. Uh. <laughs> Let's keep going. You don't tell anyone? Nope. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, wh where are you attempting to go? Back to where we heard the whispers. Okay. Uh, that will take a <laughs> while to get to. Yeah. Uh, for now, I can tell that as you travel, the greatest majority of the spots where you left a mark, there, the markings are gone. You do find a few here and there um, on like places where like when you marked a, a wall that wasn't covered in frost and it was just straight in the stone and everybody heard just a really loud screeching of your da of your dagger uh, scratching against the actual stone. That mark is still there. There's a few others like that uh, that are still visible that you find. The majority of them have been physically removed. Mm -hmm. uh, Pip uh, puts on his mask of personas and every few minutes he turns around and makes silly faces to the rest of the group. <laughs> um, Sunny is honestly playing along, also telling the group about the things that she plans to do, uh, all the foods that she misses, misses and wants to eat again. Um, she and Pip just talk your ears off. Um, and I can tell you one thing, guys. As long as we're here in this tunnel together, I don't ever think I'll be sad again. I like your optimism, Pip. I 
I mean, with Professor here, we've got all the, the food and water we could ever want. You speak of this as if it is your home, as a place to stay. No, no, I'm just saying that... Well, it doesn't mean we will not have to cross that chasm again, so I'm on, honestly, I'm all up for it. You two aren't trying to keep us here, are you? No, I'm not trying to keep us here. Uh, the opposite, in fact. I'm saying that I mean, even if this was the only place that we ever saw for the rest of our lives, I think we could be happy here. We do have each other's company, after all. Yeah. And you would be content with that if... If that's where things landed. I just think if someone wanted us miserable, they'd have to get us out of here. <laughs> that is true. The outside world is quite miserable. Not gonna lie, I am feeling pretty miserable right now. No, 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 no. <clears throat> no, you're not. We have places to go. We have things to do. But just imagine everything I mean, else that we've seen in this cave. The, it's been a uh, lot worse than just a I tunnel. Mean, and not to belittle you, but none of you are quite in your right minds right now. You haven't been sleeping at all. Yurian, I need you to be happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. trying to, I'm trying I to keep us. I need you to be happy right now. But <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to look out for all of you. Like, we can I be happy. We I can don't. Be... I, listen, I don't like, know what happy memories you have anymore. But I need you to think about them. <laughs> we can pretend to be happy. We can pretend to be happy all we like, but it's not going to change anything. I am very happy. Are you sure? You don't seem very happy. Think happy thoughts. Would you like to stab your doll again? I don't no, stab that's things it. when I'm happy. Pip, I can't take this anymore. I am miserable. I'm done. And okay, Arn just where are you gonna throws go? his hands in the air. Uh, and he looks over at Viren and says, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. This was fun up until now, but I'm done. So, your journey ends here. I think this game ends here. Mm -hmm. And he's looking over here and says, we can just play a different one. Are you sure? I mean, I've been having a lot of fun. Really? Yes. Well, I mean, I know you haven't gotten to do what you want to do I haven't yet, gotten to punch anyone yet. I know, we've been trying. I Aaron, want to get that cat. Listen, buddy. I got... Listen. I... I uh... Pip just pats him on the back and then stabs him. <laughs> <laughs> roll an attack roll. <laughs> 19 to hit. Okay, let me see. Uh, 18 hits. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. Six points. This is your magical dagger, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you, you're moving to approach Arian, and like he knows what you're doing. Uh, and he immediately pulls away from you and you're just a little bit faster and you manage to get him like through um, to scratch his arm open. And he goes, ah, damn it. Okay, yep, game's over. We're playing a different one now. Um, he steps away from you, Pip. Um, and as you see him grow taller in size and wider, more um, sturdy, he says, you have just made me really miserable right now. Um, his shape is no longer recognizable as the body of Arin Moyer at all. Uh, no more clothes. The shape remains vaguely humanoid, two, two legs, two arms, uh, a part of the body that could be recognized as the head, but 
there is no flesh, no skin, um, rotten or otherwise. Uh, instead, this is a mound of snow and ice, not in the shape of uh, of a snowman. Uh, there's nothing uh, fun looking about this creature. Um, and uh, uh, he stands just really tall uh, <laughs> in front of you. Um, something kind of resembling a mouth uh, twisted in a grin. And he says, I'm going to punch you now. And that's where <laughs> we'll end the session. Oh, um, oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't like this thing very much. <laughs> That's what happens when you stab things. <laughs> well, that's a learn. Oh, wow. I hope you were miserable today. <laughs> How long has Arn been gone? <laughs> <laughs> Why does that keep happening? <laughs> I will let you. We heard, we heard a female voice too, though. I think Virian's one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> what was that delay about? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron and Virian have been <laughs> conspiring this whole time. Uh, you know what? Uh, Jory and I are um, don't have a whole lot of uh, of time uh, right now because we have another session in half an hour. Uh, yeah. Um, but is there anything you would like to do before we call the session for good? For good. For for today. This is the last one. <laughs> yes. For today. No, I am I am I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Right then. Save it for, save it for next time. Mm hmm Perfect. Uh we should have Matt back next week. Matt. Is Pat, anyone Pat, Pat. Uh, um going to be missing? Mm. I Beautiful. might be late, but I don't know for sure. <clears throat> like a tiny bit late or very late? I I cannot say. Okay. I would love I to have you all here at the beginning of either. next session. Yeah, I will try. Definitely. Okay, what do you say, Dennis? I don't know 100% either yet, mainly because there is a cookie baking thing. Mm -hmm. I know that we have uh, with Christmas approaching, uh, um, everyone's weekends are going to start to get a little, a little busy. -er. Um, so like it's it's fine. I understand. Uh, just just let me know ahead of time if possible, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, then this is it. Thank you for being here today. I'm returning your minis to you so I can clear the table. Uh, Thank you. And I I will end the stream right now. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.